Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the 2024 Pokemon Let's Go Any Percent NMS tournament. My name is Trevaria, and I will be on commentary for you today. Joining me are Benjamin Reese and Mocha Jones. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. Doing well. Excited to see these, this race today. I think, I mean, when the draw came out, you looked at most of the races and thought, this is... This is a really good race, but this is this I think is is certainly no exception to that. Three really good quality runners. Oh, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And speaking of the runners, let's go through them really quickly. Uh coming from part one, we have our number two seat uh in the entire tournament, the French powerhouse that is Saint Sink. But truly an extraordinary runner. Um Participating in the tournament for the first time here. Didn't participate last year. Surely coming into this with high hopes. Yeah, the current uh, world record holder, world record holder for, for Pikachu with a time of 2.59.14. So uh, if they can get close to that, that's going to be some, some time to beat. Oh, yeah, but that, that would be quite the achievement of sub three <laughs> in a tournament race. <laughs> You'd basically have to be edgy for that. But yeah, uh, Saiyan facing up here against uh, Crisis from Pot 2. Who's the person who took a lot of Saiyan's world records over in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? Uh, I haven't seen him play too much Let's Go recently. But considering his caliber as a runner, I expect him to be no slouch here today. Yeah, 307. Uh, one is Crisis's uh, PB time that was set on, on Pikachu, which is the version they're running today. And then, of course, rounding out our European trio here today, we have uh, Sheep here coming in from part three. He's been at some stellar paces in PB attempts recently, uh, so I'm sure he'll be a force to be reckoned with if he can bring his A game. The, the, uh, only... the set... Go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, our only Pika runner today is... Looks like his PB is 310, 54, so... We're already off. Yeah, Sheep, yeah, there's the, the kind of the second best time in in Pot 3. It wouldn't surprise me if they uh, go on to break uh, break that 310 error pretty soon. And Sheep is going for the, the bold strat of picking Boy 2 as opposed to Boy 1. <laughs> Not a single girl trainer, though. I'm a little bit disappointed. Coincidentally, they've all picked the same name, I think. That's so weird. Wow. What? <laughs> you mean one is not a common name? Although, actually, having said that, Crisis has gone with question mark, so... A oh, question mark? I, re yeah, I respect that's it. That's unique. <laughs> it is... I, I don't know how to feel about that. Uh, our, we'll call it RNG manipulation and see how it goes. Uh, also, Cyan's got a female Pikachu. That's a little bit... Uh, a little bit of representation, at least. <laughs> <laughs> It'll do. Alright, well, we're off, and uh, all of our runners are about to go through the options menu. Pretty standard affair. Yeah, you'll be familiar with all of these, but fast tech speed turning off battle animations, skipping most, well, unfortunately not most cutscenes, but as many as you can. Yeah, I think it's about four uh, pre-rendered cutscenes that are skipped during the run, or are made skippable through changing that one option. You still have to press plus or minus depending on which Joy-Con you're using. The first thing to look at is going to be the the CP of all the uh, of this initial encounter because you can tell whether or not you've got a neutral nature because of it, right? That I think that's only for... on Pikachu. Yeah, that's true for Pikachu, not for Eevee. Uh, all Eevees have twenty seven CP, but only neutral Pikachu's have twenty seven CP. So usually. As a Pika runner in the tournament, you can breathe a sigh of relief if you see 27 CP, because that means at least it's definitely not minus attack. 
Yeah, with EV runners, it's either you, you check in lab, reset to get your neutral, or find out at uh, on the Caterpie fight. So we'll, we'll find out here soon uh, just how these uh, these starters are going to do. Yeah, we mentioned that there are certain natures that that you're certainly looking to avoid. Uh, for Eevee, which is kind of where I've got, which is the one I'm more familiar with, you, you, you don't want to take either minus attack or minus speed if you can help it. Although, depending on the characteristics, sometimes you might do. I think Pikachu, you get a little bit more freedom with what you can take. Yeah, speed really isn't an issue for Pikachu, so... Uh... Minus attack is still pretty bad. Minus special attack, you can pretty easily compensate by just getting a lot of experience. Uh, but yeah, minus attack hurts quite a bit. Makes you lose a couple of turns, uh, makes some fights a lot scarier. So ideally, you'd still want to avoid it. Let's see if anyone checks right after getting the Pokemon. Because if you check here and it turns out to be minus attack or minus speed for EV, you can still switch over to your backup safe, since the runners are allowed to prepare a neutral nature. Okay, plus speed for sheep. It's going to keep going. The only one who checked in the lab. Pokemon natures are one of those things that I always try and learn. And there's a few of them that, that stick, but generally they don't. Uh, Hasty is plus Happy. speed minus defense, so that's A-OK. -okay. Yeah, Scarlet and Violet Runners will be familiar with that one because there's a Hasty Mints uh, early on in the game that is used in a couple of yeah. Scarlet and Violet sequence. But no Mints in this game, so can't change your nature. Yeah, um, later on we'll be uh, sinking some modest, so we'll, we'll talk about that in a, an hour and a half. Hour and a half, probably. Yeah. In the meantime, do what every new trainer does and strategically dodge any encounters in Route 1. We're not interested in them. No, not, not at all. Everything here is so low level that it wouldn't give you any meaningful experience and also would take forever to actually evolve. And we also don't actually have balls yet, right? Well, we do. I, I we think just... you actually get the balls early in this version. Okay, yeah, I think you, you, Yeah, you just, we just don't want to catch anything because we don't get very much experience and it takes a little time for those things to evolve. Because we want to make sure things evolve as quickly as possible in this run. Yeah, avoiding those slow level up screens as frequently as you can is 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 the strategy. And there's a few ways that you counter that you counteract that. And we'll see that when we get into the forest, we don't actually uh, we don't catch anything there immediately anyway. Most of the time. Yeah, the only exception might be a Bulbasaur, and in Sheep's case, uh, a Pikachu. But we'll talk about that in about a minute. Uh, yeah. But we have our first fight. Uh, we'll see how these uh, these Pikachus are with their damage rolls. Yeah, we might get a clue about Pika's special attack and defense stats here, depending on how hard it hits and how hard it gets hit by Eevee. Was that a crit on Was Saiyan? It crit? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a crit on Saiyan. Uh, but it seems to be neutral defense. And also neutral special attack, from what I can tell, might be minus special attack. One of the nice things about running Pikachu over Eevee just in this fight is that you can't get paralyzed from from Thundershock, which can yeah. which can definitely uh, throw a spanner in the works. It looks like all of our uh, runners got through that fight uh, relatively unscathed. Get a free heal right after it, so it doesn't really matter. Change of outfit, which we will never use. Well, I mean, it's it's not like different outfits haven't been utilized in a Let's Go tournament before. <laughs> I 
and the first regular trainer fight here. This is where our Pika runners will be able to tell their natures because Pikachu hits level up, uh, hits its level up to level six from this Ralpha fight, whereas Eevee for some reason is one exp short and will only level up on the next fight after this one. Yeah, I never really understood that, but hey, it's a thing. I think it's because Eevee gives one more EXP than Pika when defeating it. Okay, let's look at the... Okay, so I think Crisis had neutral attack but got an attack AV there. Let's say it also had neutral attack. I'm sure some eagle-eyed viewers in chat will have figured it out faster than I. Yeah, definitely faster than me because I'm still learning my still trying to get these natures on in my brain. Pokemon is saying that yeah. Go ahead, sorry. I was just about to say Amber saying in chat that Crisis might be plus special attack, which would be huge. Plus special attack nature and also an attack AV at six. If that continues, uh, and it turns out that that Pikachu has a an attack characteristic, that would be a very powerful Pika. Yeah, characteristics have been in the game for a while, but not really done anything up until, as far as I can tell, up until Let's Go, where they help to determine where your uh, AVs, although I think I see them read in literature referred to as Go Power, which blew my mind because I'd only ever known them as AVs. Basically, you get an extra stat point in a random stat after each level up, but it's not actually a random stat. The characteristic helps to determine where that goes to. Yeah, it's a preference. Uh, I don't know how exactly it works out, but uh, it's, it's not like that's the only stat that gets AVs. There's a lot of spawns for. She got a Pikachu spawn, yeah. so that's a really good for him. He can um, pretty much one turn that uh, the Pinky fight coming up here. Yeah, it's level six too. That's really good for an Android Pika. Best level it can be at, I think. Uh, so that's going to be decent experience as well. Excellent throw as well. Chris has confirmed in chat that his Pikachu is plus special attack, minus special defense. Nice, we take those. Yep. And that might be one of... That's certainly, you know, almost an ideal nature for the Pikachu, to be honest. Yeah, the best one, I think, uh, or in my taste, is plus attack minus speed, since speed really doesn't matter for Pikachu. It's just so fast. That's the... That, that... Where it's fine that it gets reduced. <laughs> Yeah, I keep doing that trial. I was talking about calling the second controller out to, to use a Pikachu in this Pidgey fight. Uh, get in one turn and not have to worry about Sand Attack. Uh, sand Attack is a thing. Okay, First catches on the board. Yeah. Hopefully. Oh, oh no, Red, Red Cup for Crisis, out. that's rough. Oh, yeah, that's so rough. Nailed the excellent throw as well with the Raspberry. Uh, that's uh, most unfortunate. Oh no! Oh, oh Sheep's kissing the Pidgey. Is, was it glowing? I didn't see. I think uh, Sheep may have just run into it. Another breakout. This is so cursed for crisis oh no at some point it's just a finally hey, uh, That's uh, so rough. at least it's now rather than later so that you're not losing out on experience for other pokemon you've caught and you've got plenty of time to make that time up although it, <laughs> it puts a sour taste in your mouth for the rest of the run yeah, and, and Crisis needs that uh, Otters as well, because Pika Runners need that Otters to fight Brock. Yeah, that might be the reason why Crisis went for Otters first, because now it'll get all of the experience from catching uh, Caterpie and Weedle. 
which they are, were both a glowing Caterpie and a glowing Weedle on the screen for Crisis. Obviously, glowing Pokemon provide more experience than a catch. I believe mm -hmm. it's a 50% uh, experience boost. Yeah, the reason that they're uh, that they pick up the lure first before uh, before catching anything is uh, a because uh, it improves the level, so it's the max level they would normally score at plus one, which means you've got yet less leveling up to do before they evolve, which is great. And I think it also increases the chance of uh, glowing Pokemon spawning, which again is an extra multiplier. Hopefully, one of them will get a super size bond which will just exponentially boost the amount of experience that they get as well. It looks like Crisis did get a super sauce uh, bug. Yeah. And there's no way to tell whether a Pokemon is super sized or just regular large or small until you catch it. Ooh. Saying getting the perfect Rat to Oddish. Rat to Oddish is going to be a level higher. Uh... So if you can't get an Oddish before both bugs spawn in the forest, it can sometimes be better to just try and get one on Rod 2. Because going into Brock with a level 7 Oddish is uh, not ideal, let's just say. Oh. It looks like we're already getting evolutions, so getting the these bugs are evolved. Bugs are the best because they evolve fast and early. Keep also getting a glowing Buzzsprout here. Very nice. The Buzzsprout is less important for EV version uh, compared to the Oddish. Since it's, it's only... Um, Early game grass type move is physical. It's not as good at defeating Onyx as Oddish is, so it usually takes a backseat to EV using double kick. The one thing is that you do need to make sure that you have the Bell Sprout or you get the Frick oh, yeah. in the forest because uh, the requirement for, for Brock's gym is that you have a Pokemon that is super effective against rock type. Uh, well, actually, I think he just says grass or water, but you can't yeah. catch any water Pokemon yet, so you have to get a grass type. Yeah, that's true. So you do have to have it, it's just not as important that it be specifically Buzzsprout. Like I said, it can be Bulbasaur. I mean, if you see both, you take them. Just oh, so sure. that way you will have more mods going towards your 50 count that we need to get in the Koga. Very much later in the run. Yeah, it's. I, it's I think. Sorry, I've just just say that there's there's always that balance of how much time you could you commit to catching things at various points in the run, because it's quite nice to sometimes to front load so that you've got a bit of wiggle room later if things don't spawn, but also you might be catching Pokemon that are a little bit slower to to evolve to level up than catching them in better places later on. So you've got to kind of trade off that risk reward. Yeah, a good example is the Rattata on Route 2. Uh, a lot of runners opt to catch Rattata there to get a little bit of uh, an early game experience boost. But there would be a route later, a Route 10, where you can catch Rattata one level off of evolving, so that would be more optimal just to get to the 50 catches quicker. But then you can also catch an evolved Raticate on Route 10, and that would be another nice experience boost. So uh, that's just kind of a trade-off that some runners like to take. So, Crisis Insane, both starting rock, uh, Brock here. Crisis with a pretty lean 5 catch count here. I expect after uh, this gym, though, he should, uh, Crisis should begin a, a few evolutions out of this, though. Yeah, probably. It's going to work out nicely for Cyan because hopefully they'll be able to to deposit both the Butterfree and the Beedrill at the same time, and not risk getting an extra level on on the Butterfree while uh, you have to wait for the Beedrill to evolve, which might be what Crisis has to do here. Yeah, you always want to avoid that dreaded level thirteen on Butterfree where it tries to learn three different moves. God. 
I don't know what's worse, Butterfree leveling up or having the the Bulbasaur level up where it trying to learn all the sport moves. Neither are great. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Sheep now made it to Brock. On eight catches on the higher end for uh Brock split the catch counts. And we're gonna see the difference between the EV and Pikachu fight here. Eevee's just gonna have to double kick through the fight, which takes a couple of turns longer, needs two turns to go through Geodude, and then three turns, or was it just the one turn, uh, the two turns for Brock? It's been a while since I've played uh, EV version. Uh, the EV nature was hasty, so plus speed minus defense. Need to tail up here and then. Double double kick. Yeah, it's five turns. Nice thing about doing this fight with Eevee is that Eevee outspeeds the Onyx usually, uh, which is not always or basically never the case for Oddish. And since Onyx has headbutts, that can actually flinch the, uh, the Oddish and make the fight go a little bit longer for Picaranas, which is a little bit annoying. Yeah, contrary to what the Pokemon anime would tell you, Onyx is actually not that good a Pokemon. <laughs> but one of the things it does have going for it, along with, you know, crazy high physical defense, is that it's got decent base speed. I think it's base 70. So, uh, it is base 70. So, it's one of those things where sometimes it'll out... the various points in other games that'll outspeed you, and you think, really, is it that fast? And it catches you off guard. Yeah. Okay, saying gets a Sentry here. Uh, Pika version can get two optional catches on this route, uh, a Sentry and Monkey. Because this isn't getting anything, which is rough for both his catch count and his experience uh, situation, since none of his bugs are evolved yet. Yeah, but it's getting this uh, every person uh, fastest catch in the game magic arm, so I uh, hear. And it's a steal too for just 500 Poké Dollars. Hey, that is a steal, okay? It it's been 500 Poké Dollars for about 27 years now. So. That's that a is a point. steal. I hadn't thought about how inflate. I hadn't thought about how inflation would affect what the price of the magic cart. Oh, uh, just now we despawning for crisis. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, it would have been unlawed, but still, not nice to see. All right. Uh, Pika runners are going to keep the Oddish in the lead here for the first two fights of Rock Tunnel. Uh, this last has a bus route, which should usually go down to two assets. And then there's another trainer with a Sentry, which of course is going to get one shot by an Absorb. And Sentries are just the bane of Pikachu's early game. Pikachu has a hard time going up against any ground type, really. Uh, so that's the main reason why we keep Oddish in the lead. Oh, he's gonna go back. Gonna say, he's gonna sheep, sheep saw a snake, and I thought sheep's gonna run away from him, but nope, went double back, getting the snake. Ah, uh, early attack cycle here. Only level three, two, so it's not gonna be great experience. Oh, also misses the excellent. It's gonna be like 50 XP, that's rough. Uh, but, you know, it's a catch. We take those. Yeah, again, just trying to front load things early so that you can... Uh, you don't have to take some of the dicier catches later on. Ooh, that was a little close there for the spinner pass on side screen. But it worked out. Turn frames are a thing. Saiyan actually going down early, uh, so it's going to keep the Oddish in the lead a little bit longer and do the central fight later. Yeah, whereas uh, Sheep's going to actually teach Headbutt on the Eevee whenever, right before he uh, has his last fight. So, uh, Eevee runners get the, get the benefit of just running with Eevee, because Eevee can take care of most things early game, plus Stab Headbutt is a thing. Yeah. 
It's actually ridiculous that you get 70 power stab pad. Oh, Chansey! Uh, for sure. For sure. What if the French audience is gonna... He's going for it. The head of that. Oh, All there right. we go. Spicy decisions. Let's go. Rise, double, understand. great ball. Let's get it. And this is a pretty rough catch, uh, but it's gonna give tons of experience. Oh, and got the excellent. If it saves him, that is gonna be so good. It's gonna be amazing. Cress sadly gets trolled by Paris a bit. Gonna lose out on his speed. Oh, saves him! That's like goodness. a thousand experience right there. 1,500. Oh boy. Oh well, my goodness. Meta both Metapod and Sukuna had level 13, <laughs> but since they haven't evolved yet, they're not going to try to learn that level 13 move. So it's it's fine. It's a little unfortunate uh, to get all of those extra levels, but... But hey, that <laughs> is also yeah. Otis, like, six levels away from evolving too, so... That's Pikachu's level 15 already, which is the level that you want to be at leaving Mount Moon. And uh, saying is not done with catches yet, I believe. So. Say so better not be done with catches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ideally, ideally you want to catch Clefairy, Paris, and Geodude in Mount Moon. Both for catch count and experience. Though, of course, for saying experience is not an issue at this point. <laughs> that, that's the advantage of the chance is that their, their base experience yield is absolutely bananas. Absolutely, yeah. We had a chance to see if anyone's gotten double moonstone yet. Uh, no one's left yet. Everyone's picked up their first moonstone. Uh, we'd have to look at like 25-26 minutes, so coming oh. up here people are probably gonna check. Keeps she setting the, the room. Yeah, he had the power spawn. spawn just as he was ready to walk out. Ah, oh, we hate to see it. Okay, but now he gets Clefairy and Para spawns. Not showing. Yeah, at the top. Ross just hasn't deposited his bonds yet. I just noticed that. Yeah, probably waiting for the bugs to evolve. You do wanna try to combine menus. Uh, and sometimes you take an extra level up on the Magic Carp. To get to that point. Alright, Sane is now okay. done from clicking through all of the things <laughs> that were triggered by the Chansey spawn and gets a glowing Geodude right after. So, yeah, this is uh, gonna be lots more experience as well. Yeah. He's gonna be set on EXP for sure. Yeah, speaking uh, of the double moonstone, I should probably explain that, or we should probably explain explain that the hidden items in this game have a certain chance to respawn every day. So the runners have set up their system clocks to tick over while they are in this room so they can pick up the moonstone and then have a 50% chance, like Crisis right there, to get a second moonstone, which just means one more free evolution of uh, one of those moonstone evos. Oh, Saiyan also gets some of them. Amazing. Did Crisis just not get the nugget? Crisis skipping nugget? I didn't pay attention. Did he get it on the way down? No, the ball is still there. I think Crisis oh. skipped nugget. Uh, you can do that. I mean, not ideal, but you can just pick up the PP up after uh, Mamun to make up for that. All right. Press is going to deposit now, I assume. Yeah, there we go. Going to get rid of all those bugs on the magic harp. Paris, no. He is struggling with experience. Level 13 at this point is not enough to hit 15 before Misty. So, uh, he's going to have to come up with something. Either hope for a Sentry or a Monkey Catch, or he's going to have to do Bridge early, which is not ideal. All 
Oh yeah. So apparently Kress is just uh was distracted and did not pick up the nugget as a result. And yeah, there are, as you mentioned, you can there are other items you can pick up to, to fix your money, but still less than ideal. That's just going for a... You might have to try and get his levels up. Wait, what not saying the ball? Sane is just so rich with experience <laughs> running into a glowing Clefairy as well. This is ridiculous. That picture is going to be level 20. <laughs> of <Before> Misty. <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> that was that must have been super size as well. It's level nineteen. <laughs> I think she got double moves on too. Wow, three for three. <laughs> this Pikachu definitely been on the Barry Bonds diet. Ridiculous how <laughs> hench this thing is. Yeah, I mean, Saint is definitely not going to have to worry about any ranges on Misty or whatever. Just going to breeze right through that, even with a neutral Pikachu. Alright, looking at the catch counts right here, Sheep is on a very, very high 15 catches. But Saint is on 11 on the other end. Low catch count, very high experience. Not the worst situation to be in. Alright, Chris it's... is going into the super nerd fight here. So you might have a hard case count. Oh. This fight is a little bit annoying for Pika if it's uh, at a regular level or slightly under levels because it's gonna take four turns. You're gonna two shot, uh, three turns, I mean. You're gonna two shot this Voltorb every time uh, Eevee can one shot this. Oh no, Sam might be able to just one shot this at level yeah. 19. Yeah, level 19 Pikachu should be able to one shot the Voltorb, but if your Pikachu is like level 14 to 16, the regular levels that it would usually be at at this point. Uh, then you're never gonna one shot the vault up unless it's extremely cracked. Which fossil are we taking? Uh, Helix, Lord Helix. Helix, very good, very nice. Uh, sorry, folks, I'm a, I'm a dome fossil fan. Yeah, easily one shots the vault up. Was saying. Not surprising at all. And Crassus is now on JJ1. Could be tricky for his level 14 Pika. Hey, did you know that um, JJ is 1C? It is, in fact, 1C. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even though it's a double battle, even if you play uh, like true, true double, this is just. Player one does all the does all the things in this fight. It's quite unfair. Yeah. Looks like we're getting a three turn here. Yeah. That's the damage not enough to take out either of the enemy Pokemon. So Chris is gonna take the extra turn to uh, heal Pikachu back to full and then hope that the acid takes out both coughing and Ekans, which it does. Sane should have uh, an easier time here. Probably gonna actually take out the coughing with Thunder Shock. That is what it is looking like. Yep. Yeah, sure. Keep not finishing up Super Nerd. We have two Helix Fossils so far. Will Cheat make a 3 for 3? Yes. Yes. <laughs> It's so that he can give the people, everyone can give the people Kabuto to look at when we get to the Safari Zone. I appreciate you. Looks like Crisis picked up some extra Pokeballs. Okay, there we go. 
Five the PPF. Just the PPF. Thirty-three minute exit from Mount Moon for ah, there we go, glowing central. That's huge for Crass. It's exactly what he needed. I think he ran to the Spiro though. Yeah, the, the Spiro <laughs> like sniped, sniped the the cat, the going for the Sanctuary for Crass right there. Okay, at least the Sanctuary didn't despawn. That can sometimes happen if things exactly overlap on the overworld. Uh, and you run into one of them. No. Oh. Oh, in this situation, Early I don't time. know. I don't know if I personally agree with the YOLO throw. Uh, I don't know how close uh, the Pikachu is from level 15 right here, but missing out on the first body XP boost that you get. Okay, that's fine. Just 15. Okay, in that case, I, I take everything back. The way all the various different catching uh, things work in this game is that they're all multipliers. So the more of them you can stack in any one catch, the kind of they become exponentially better. Ooh, also gets a uh, Radita? Okay, interesting. Long Radita. Yeah. Glowing, yeah, can definitely go for this. 69 CP, nice. <laughs> nice. Like I said earlier, a decent early game catch to help with your EXP. And you can just catch Eradicate later, which is a little bit slower, catching both stages individually, but we're already doing it with Geodude and uh, Graveler anyway, so... Did she Not hit, hit 15? Yeah. Level 17 from that, okay. Well... Oh, wow. Some extra levels in the Zuat and the Sand Shrew. Saiyan's already in uh, Misty's gym. I predict that he will not have trouble with this. <laughs> no. Not at all. Pikachu obviously has the type advantage in this gem, uh, with its electric type and the super strong special move that runners can pick up in the Pokemon Center in Cerulean. That is Zippy Zap for Pikachu, which is a 50 power electric type, physical electric type move that always crits. It's the three marvelous moves for EV one for each type of the Gen One evolution. So fire, electric, water, and you've got Zappy, uh, yeah, Zappy Zap Scissor Slide and uh, Bouncy Bubble. Bouncy Bubble, yeah. Which works out perfectly for Nugget Bridge when we get there. I believe the EV electric type move is Buzzy Buzz. The one. Yeah. They all have very good names. <laughs> the best one's the Dark type. Which is sad because we never bad? see it. Bad, bad and bad. bad is such a. I mean, it's appropriate given that it's a terrible name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Sane already beating uh, Misty here. Very handily. They say it's ready to go up to Nugget Braves to face Rival 2. Also, the, in different Pokemon games, like the early gym leaders give you pretty garbage TMs. Uh, absolutely, they do not in this, because both of the first two TMs you get... Uh, you Actually, I think the first three gym leaders, yeah. canonically anyway, they yeah. give you TMs that you all use. It's not actually the first three gym leaders for us, but still. Okay. <laughs> who care, who we, cares we about Warner? Yeah, just a little bit. But yeah, uh, Brock gives you Headbutt that I mentioned earlier, which is uh, huge for both uh, versions, but especially for Eevee. Then uh, Misty gives us uh, Skull, oh. which is obviously an incredibly powerful water type move. Um, One that we will see much later in the run. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be the main attacking move for our late game main Pokemon. And then... Return Search gives us Thunderbolt, which I don't think I have to say anything about that particular move. The same on level 2, just defeated the Oddish here. Defeating the Oddish can be a little bit annoying for Pikachu because uh, you can't actually one-shot it, so you usually go for a headbutt turn 1, and if you don't flinch Oddish, 
it can go for absorb and heal back to over half, which means another headbutt won't kill it. Uh, or it can go for a poisoning <laughs> move, so then you're poisoned, then you have to <laughs> spend a turn healing. Uh, it's really annoying. Would, would headbutt crit get the uh, get the oddish? Depending on your attack stat uh, and your level, yeah. of course. Like Saints, I I'm not Saints sure if Saints <laughs> may have actually one shot the Oddish right there, but uh, level 20 pickup probably can. So, is there a world where Saiyan takes this, this Pikachu away, like all the way? Probably not. No. Just because Pika is not a really good mid game. Uh, Pika gets a lot of help. Yeah, I'm just the main reason would be turnarounds. Uh, so the way the friendship mechanic works in this game, uh, Pokemon start turning around, looking for like reinforcement when they hit um, for super effective damage at a certain threshold of their friendship to you. Uh, and because we use the starter so much in the early game, it starts hitting it, uh, hitting that threshold toward the end of its quote-unquote lifetime. Um, so if you kept going with it, it would just turn around every time and waste like a second, two seconds uh, every time you hit a super effective move and that adds up over time, so... It's an EV runner, you see that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Even though... Uh, even though these, the, the starter EV and the starter Pikachu, uh, to make up for the fact that they can't evolve, uh, they have a uh, base stat increase and they're all perfect IV, but by the time you get to the late game, they uh, are absolutely outclassed. Uh, Greta, no, no, we, we, we don't kill the Pikachu and Eevee, we just send them to a farm upstate. They go to their nice vacation home, is what's happening. They go to the Orange Islands. Those definitely real places. Professor Ock definitely will not turn them into candy. <laughs> so yeah, a Nugget Bridge, it's just a gauntlet of very easy uh, fights. Every trainer has one Pokemon. Uh, Pikachu version spams the piece up. Uh, Eevee version spams that, but... So, commentary does tend to devolve in this part of the run, because <laughs> there's really not a lot going on. Um, but hey, we almost made it. Saiyan is already fighting yeah. the rocket grunt, so uh, there's going to be some other stuff to talk about. Yeah, at, at least oh. Eevee gets to show off the marvelous moves here, but it's not not riveting content. Well, ideally Eevee really doesn't use the moves too much because you want to avoid those super effective hits uh yeah. headbutt of course gonna hit for neutral damage and with the same type attack bonus it's still gonna hit so hard that it takes care of most of the pokemon here the only exceptions to this are the Sentru, for example because you want to heal with bouncy bubble like that and the uh, growlith later on is another one of those everything that's weak to water gets sucked like dry yeah, we do want to make sure we have enough headbutts for the Rhino Hate fights that are after uh, Rival 3. So, keep keep our PP count in mind, though. Alright, Sane, Sane has done it. He's left yes. the Nugget Bridge. Not gonna get any spawns here. There's a couple of spawns that you could potentially go for in this route, including Venonat and the Elusive uh, Squirtle. Also gonna Just go for the first. This game. Skip here. There we go. Easy. Trainer vision is a myth. <laughs> yeah, this is probably the easiest one, even though it looks a little dicey. Uh, just kind of snake through the trainer vision there, and you're not gonna get spotted. Uh, the only interesting thing, in my opinion, about Nugget Bridge is that depending on where you are, when you talk to this Rocket Grant here, you'll get a different background for the fight, because the bridge has its own kind of fight uh, area, so to speak. Background. I 
can't think of the proper word, theme. So uh, Cyan did it on the bridge, uh, but Crisis walked off the bridge, and so is getting the, the kind of the general route background. And now Sane's gonna go and talk to Bill. Gonna turn Bill back into a human. Hopefully we'll not walk away from Bill. <laughs> no. Although I did hear that the PSR marathon is accepting meme runs. Yeah, but if you're gonna do the meme, you want to commit to the meme, right? So in that case, don't catch anything that you don't need. Just bare minimum experience. Race here. Ooh. Okay, now it's just a different angle there for Crisis. I usually go in from below. For a second, I thought uh, Crisis was gonna attempt knock skip. People have been talking about it in chat. What is what is knock skip for the uninitiated? That is a different kind of uh, like vision exploit that you can do on this route that's just a tad faster than just walking through the route regularly but it's super risky and uh, because of that not a lot of people go for it it's hard to describe so i'm not even going to attempt okay <laughs> it has to do with the uh one spinner the first spinner that you walk by uh and that's action All right, it's time for my favorite show to come on. Uh, Paul's uh, Detective Pikachu's on right now. Oh yeah. Uh, Wait, isn't that a movie? That's all the case. That's all the case. I was promised Ryan Reynolds. Well, you can't have everything, you know. I was promised Cursed Ludicolo. <laughs> Okay, some people broke in. Uh, right. Fruit. Oh my god, yeah, there's a massive oh, hole in the wall. Who would have thought? Our oh, raspberries are really giant. I never really paid attention to that, but that's bigger than our hat. Or at least big bigger than Pikachu's hat. The thing that gets me is supposedly that they use dig to get in there, but surely if they <laughs> use dig, there'd be a hole in the floor and not in yeah. the wall. Don't question it. We're just going okay. with that. He'd probably use bulldoze to get through the wall, right? I mean... You know what? I would think... Brick break? Brick break, yeah, also works. Yeah. Earthquake will probably just bring the whole house down. So maybe don't go for that. Yeah, if you ever kind of stop to think about what Pokemon moves would actually do, it... I think <laughs> you start on a very <laughs> slippery slope. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Chris is also going into Detective Pikachu right now. While she is getting his own little Detective Eevee. Spin off. So who's voicing Eevee? Uh, I see chat. That is a good question. Who's voicing Eevee? I've heard Danny DeVito somewhere. Oh. <laughs> that would be, that'd be unhinged. <laughs> 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 Alright, let's, let's just gloss right over that and talk about Route 6 that's coming up for Sane here. Route 6 is hugely <laughs> important for Pika specifically because they're going to want to catch a Growlithe and make it uh, the partner Pokemon for this next section because Pikachu doesn't have the same type coverage that Eevee gets uh, and Growlithe is very strong and just knows Flamethrower from the get-go so we're looking for a Growlithe here and if we can't get a Growlithe we also take Abras but those are a lot rarer. Yeah, the, the Pikachu oh, route has to... Oh, there's a Growlithe has to main switch a lot more frequently than the Eevee does. And there are some runners who prefer that because it, you know, it makes the route a bit more interesting than just you take a Pokemon, you run it for a while, and then maybe and then you switch later on and then you run that and job done. Whereas this the Pikachu route's a bit more a bit more flexible and adaptive 
all the way through. Yeah, since uh, we can summon and uh, de-summon the second controller, like the second player character, on a whim, we can just make any fight a 2v1. Uh, and so thus, using a second Pokemon as a partner is really, really helpful for the speedrun. It used to not be allowed in the early days of running this game, but uh, luckily it is these days. Okay, Jigglypuff. That's also another one you want to see. Uh, and this is also the sequence in which you want to catch these, ideally, because that Growlithe should hit level 18. Um, the sooner the better. So that Jigglypuff experience is really going to be nice. Let's see if Saiyan sticks around for any other catches. He might just choose to move on. Alright, Crass is also reaching Red 6 now. Cheap and Saiyan going for... Oh, oh, okay! Oh. It's a little but it worked. Instead of stepping through the Vermillion skip, that's probably the most difficult one, at least in my opinion, of the trainer skips in this run. Uh, because you have to hit the, the exact center of those two lands of vision. Presses. Ah, getting a puppy now. Glowing puppy too. He Cheap does here. not need a puppy. Oh, but sees two Sadducks. Well, not going for one. Yeah, ah. usually, usually we don't go for Sadducks here because oh, so many Sadducks though. Going for oh. the rat here. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah. Because you can catch Psyduck much later where it actually has a chance to evolve into Golduck. Um, True. If you catch it here, it's like 20 levels of evolving, so it's not really... It basically takes Golduck off the table completely. And this Rattata is not ideal to catch here because it's going to take four levels to Evo if you catch it here instead of the one level that it would take if you just wait to the next catching section after uh, after the boat. But if you're a little bit strapped for experience, uh, it's still a decent pickup. And since nothing else is spawning for, for uh, oh, cheap here, boy. I mean, yeah, he even goes for the Psyduck. He's not getting the Vulpix, he's not getting the Jigglypuff. That's rough. Saiyan's already on SSN. Chris has got quite a bit of experience there. Not sure what he just caught. I think it was a Pidgey. I could okay. be wrong. 1200 XP from a Pidgey, that would be surprising. Oh, it was a Pidgey. It must have been super sized. Okay. It was super sized. Well, <laughs> we take those, I guess. <laughs> And yeah, there was a big all... lurking at the top yeah, of the Yeah, at the very top. Oh, Abra! Abra can, can say yeah, get it. Yeah. Okay. Abra's tricky, but... Oh, oh she passed the right trainer. Uh, I was practicing this clip earlier. That's so rough. So, Abra, if you approach it head-on, it, it sees you and it, and it teleports away. So you've got to be sneaky about it. Yeah, Press has had a decent angle on it, so it's fine. And speaking of fine, these fights are fine for EV, so if you m mess up the skip going into the million, both of those are one shots. This uh, Brad Spread obviously gets one shot with Sizzly side, and then the other, the other trainer has a Charmander, so you can oh, just uh, bouncy bubble that. Yeah. Pikachu, uh, that's not quite as easy because the Brad Sprout, there's no way to one shot that for Pikachu. At least it makes getting the skip on the way up a lot easier. That is true, because you yes. don't really have to skip anymore. You can just lean to the side that you already uh, fought. See, just me or is the way up a bit tougher than the way down? Oh, I because find going you know. down way tougher than going up. Yeah, people always say that the way up is easier, but it's also harder for me, personally. I don't know yeah. why. I think that everyone always says you can, you can line up with the tiles, but that just messes with my head, I don't know. <laughs> I take I take a vibes-based approach to all sorts of skill expression. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a, a good approach, honestly. Well, you say, I mean, on the one hand, it means if things go wrong, you kind of can't really complain. But on the other hand, <laughs> does it make me good at the game? 
Mm, uh, come back to me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Alright then. Sane is just gonna get the first... I actually forgot. Secret technique is what they're called. Uh, the thing that replaces the HMs in this in this uh, game. Which is chop down, the replacement for cut. Uh, the nice thing is that using these secret techniques is not locked behind specific badges. So we don't actually have to fight uh, the and search right here. I mean, obviously you would have you would have been able to use cut to get the search anyway, but uh, you don't have to get that badge to be able to use later secret techniques. So we can just abandon this and fight search much, much later. In fact, from the point that the runners beat Misty to beating the next gym leader, there's going to be like an hour and a half of run when not a single gym leader is fought. Nope, a lot of story progression, which... Yes. And a lot of catching as well, because we need to start catching get towards that 50. Yeah, for sure. It's not like nothing happens during those 90 minutes. It's just that <laughs> no gym leaders. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, they uh, put a fence around the little, uh, not an island, the little peninsula that Serge's gym is on, so that you can't use, you can't use whatever the placement for surf is. I can't remember what they call that either. Sea uh, skim. Thank you very much. Uh, you can't use sea skim to get around it. You do actually have to go into the SSN and get uh, chopped down from the from the old sea captain. Yeah, we didn't really even talk about Rival 3 here on the boat. Uh, no one seems to be having a hard time with this one. EV, slow EVs can get outsped by the Pidgeotto here, which can be very annoying because it has sand attack. Uh, it also likes to just one-shot the Buzzsprout with wing attack if it gets to move. So um, always a good idea to either have a fast EV or high experience. And we know Sheeps is... Uh... It's plus speed. Yeah, so yes. not an issue for him at all. And also then taking Pika... advantage... Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, taking advantage of the fact that X items uh, have the Gen 7 effect of they boost you two stages, but they have the original Gen 1 prices. So uh, you'd have seen in the shop in Vermilion that we invest heavily in them. Oh, yeah. Again, this game is very uh, cost-effective. I, mean, I mean, we have the cheapest magic arm there is, we have the cheapest X items there are, and they've been this way for 27 years almost. Mm -hmm. And Nintendo makes up for that by never dropping the prices of their games. <laughs> what? Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, well, uh, saying on Route 9 already is gonna fight uh, the Sancho Eradicate trainer here. Uh, this trainer can be a little bit rough if your Growlithe has not hit level 18 yet, uh, because that Sancho can be a range, and then it also likes to use things like Dig or Sand Attack to ruin your day. Uh, yeah, the Scrawlith is level 17, so if it has bad special attack, it might not be able to oko the Sentry with a flamethrower. Okay, got the range, very good. Yeah, that... If it even was a range, if this was a very high special attack Scrawlith, then doesn't really matter. Yeah, looked like it was pretty high up there, so... Safe fight for Saiyan. And then Crisis, just coming off, off the boat, is going to have to do the Vermilion skip one more time as well. While Sheep can just hug the right side here. It looks like Sheep is learning to try and get more mods to spawn. <laughs> Activating the lure again, yeah. I've been in this position before as well. It sucks and doesn't even get a Jigglypuff of Opix on the way back up with the lure. It's about to use that Moonstone or something else. Let's skip the easy skip again. 
both of them are gonna go through the underground. So, uh, Sain got the Gloom Evil already, so now he's gonna have to decide whether to keep one Pokemon in the party longer. Or do one catch with one controller on Route 10. Because this is the spot where you would get rid of the Growlithe and the Gloom and the Wigglytuff that's evolving right now. But once he fights on Route 10 are really annoying. I've been trolled by trying to catch a Nidoran female with one controller before and it breaking out like four times. So it's a bit of a risk. But if you keep the Gloom around, it's probably going to get a few extra levels. So let's see what Saiyan decides. Yeah, Saiyan taking advantage of the fact that he, like the other runners, all got the double Moonstone. Yeah. So we can get that evolution done nice and early. And if you can get a Stone Evo like that and the stones are on the way, it's quicker than going through catching. Decides to get rid of everything. Uh, so, gonna have to get one once he catch. Takes the spinner slow. Could have passed it, but you never know. And let's see what we get here on our turn. Radicate, glowing Radicate fast spawn. Uh, Spiro, glowing Spiro. Okay, he's gonna go for the Spiro once he. Let's see if it works out. Gonna check if he has a Radicate already. He doesn't, but he also doesn't have a Radicate, so he probably does not want to go for Radicate. Oh, it breaks out. Razzing. Not Razzing. Oh, this is rough for Saiyan. Break out and then a pretty slow attack cycle after. Okay, it stays in the text second time. Not ideal, but it could have been much worse, honestly. Uh... Yeah, at the very least, they're absolutely fine for experience because they were having the well-balanced breakfast early on, so... Yeah, for sure. But now it's all Spiro, baby. That's gonna have mm. to repel lore here to reset the spawns. And hope for... There we okay, go. Okay, I'm built in a up. female. Well, it's not just a female. Yeah. yeah. The other one's yeah. a rat. I didn't see it. Uh, so, catching... Saw... Go ahead. I was gonna say, I just saw a purple and thought it was a male. <laughs> yeah, Pichu uh, swaps the partner Pokemon again at this point to the Nido. One of the Nidos. Ideally, you want the uh, Nidoran male here to use Nidoking later because that gets a uh, stab a poison jab. Uh, but Nidor and Female and Nidor Queen also work, that gets Crunch, which is still a powerful move, but uh, obviously it doesn't get the same type of attack bonus. Yeah, good. Tab also a good spawn. Uh, takes a little bit longer to level up four levels, but it's a little bit catch here if it, if it actually spawns, because it's also, I think it's 10% to spawn or something on this route. And we won't use it to attack, but crap, is a good Pokemon. Higher base attack than Giratina. Alright, let's see what Sheep gets here. You don't feel Oh, perfect. Animal. That's obviously oh, you love to that's see it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Eevee not, not reliant on the Nidos at all, but you still love to see them here just for the catch counts. Yeah, especially because he didn't uh, find a Jigglypuff Ooh. on uh, on the previous route. So catching both Nidos means that you have two Moonstone Pokemon there and you don't have to get a Clefairy out of the box to evolve it. Yeah, the Pika Runners obviously save one of the Moonstones for the Nido Evo, uh, always. And then the second one, if they get one, can be used on the Jigglypuff. But uh, Eevee just usually evolves every Jigglypuff they see they can get, right? Uh, ooh, Crest is almost hitting the spinner. Uh, but then, yeah, you can use the second one on any of the other Moonstone Evos. Jigglypuff is the only uh, Moonstone Evo that doesn't try to learn a move on, uh, on evolving, so that's usually the one that you would prioritize. But beyond that, it really doesn't make a difference if you evolve a uh, little male, little female, or Clefairy. 
both Sheep and Crisis ever so slightly too late on those excellent throws. Yeah, that's some motion control stuff happening right now. Mm -hmm. Some cycles. It's really... I mean, the first time you play Let's Go, the... Oh! Play Chansey. Bonjour! The first time you give it a go. Don't do it, Sheep, no! Sheep's doing it! It's a bad Oh, Sheep! Not 10 chances is such a such a bad idea. Don't do it. Don't do this at home. <laughs> I kind of get it in his situation because he's so low on catches and experience, but oh, this is going to be so rough. Please stay in. Please just work out. He has Full to okay. Never yes. in doubt. Never punished. Very good. Dynam right on hand with the calcs. Uh So you are slightly favoured to get that to stick in the ball. But it's not good. 65 for 90%. <laughs> well, yeah, he's going to be happy about that for sure. This is getting a crap here. I don't know if Ness is going to be... I don't think a nice is guaranteed, but it does stay in. A lot of evos happening right now because there's so many uh, Pokemon that you catch here. A lot of them one level up of evolving. And you usually also have that auto show or Brad Sprout still in your party from the early game. So, uh, yeah. Evos galore. You know, what you are seeing is how the catch counts really do fluctuate up and down throughout the run because Sheep was really was heavier than the other two early and then dropped behind going back into Vermilion and then popped back and then has caught up immediately going into Rock Tunnel. And they really do vary all the way through. So even if a runner looks like, you know, they're ahead or behind, that there's so much variation in the in the various catch routing that that is where a lot of the time gain and losses made up. Yeah, I do want to point out Saiyan also went ahead and did the uh, the rocket fight to respawn the, the grass and call it a Nidorino during that time. Oh, he actually uses... He called, an, he called an Evolve Nidorino and he uses that. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. So, uh, there's a couple of things that you can do if you can't get a Nidoran male. One is, of course, use a Nidoran female. Do you just decline Thrash? No, he's teaching it, okay. Because that's the other thing that you can do. You can catch an Evolve in the Reno. That's not gonna have Poison Jab, but you can teach it Thrash on level up. Now, reasonable runners disagree, uh, but well, the consensus usually is that using Crunch on Nidor Queen is slightly faster, slightly more consistent than using Thrash on Nidor King. So uh, I'm interested to hear Shane's reasoning behind going for the Thrash strat here. I guess it saves you a slight bit of time in that you don't have to click the moves again because when you click Thrash, you're locked into it for two to three turns. Yeah. But is that is that worth it? Um... Debatable. Oh, keep on. Very good. Catching it here pretty much guarantees that it'll somehow come up in tower. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Tower Cubone, even though it's on the spawn table, 1% more likely to spawn in Pokemon Tower, always only seems to show up when you don't need it. No, the, the... Much rarer than in Rock Tunnel. Yeah, it, it's, the spawn rate at, in in tower is, is, <laughs> is really bad. <laughs> So if you you ideally if you don't have to catch anything there, that's great. Yeah. All right. Sheep just gearing up for. Is sheep doing Nidos? 
Do the king strats? Uh, you can do that as well. Uh, you can use that for the Kanga fight, I believe, uh, which helps EV too, but it's, I would call it an optional strat. Uh, let's yeah, see here. I, I definitely yeah. understand going for nice early Rhyhorn there. Going for safety, uh, especially with the way that the the new format for the tournament works, is that you may have noticed that rather than kind of going with the more traditional winners losers brackets, uh, it's a Swiss draw format this year. So uh, the first place runner in each race gets three points, the second place gets two, third place gets one, and then uh, you get zero if you DNF for, for any reason. So. Uh, and the idea is that after each round, you get rematched with players who have the same or similar score to you to kind of ensure closer races all the way through, uh, which are kind of, I think, better for viewers because everyone likes watching for close races. And it's kind of also nicer for, for runners where you're more likely to be matched up against players of a similar skill level to you. And it make, makes, it kind of shows you kind of where you can improve against those roughly at, at the same sort of level. And uh, I think, you know, because there is a, because there is the added incentive of finishing the run, even if it's a slow time, because it does at least get you an extra point, which could matter when it comes to qualifying later on in the tournament. It will change the match that's a little bit going on that, yeah, maybe you just say, I'm going to take things a little bit slower, but ensure that I actually am able to get a run finishing. Yeah, that's going to be some strategy coming into this tournament with the Swiss format. Uh... Trying to beat that median time if you can't win the win the whole race. By the way, uh, Krasis did get an extremely early Rhyhorn here, basically first thing he saw. So that's very good because of course we want to ride that Rhyhorn to increase movement speed. Uh, the earlier you get that, the better. And there he goes. Also getting him a chop here, very nice. So yeah, the uh, two big spawns that you want to get in this rock tunnel are Rhyhorn for use as a ride Pokemon and Graveler because that's just a lot of experience right there. Uh, Sane already has both. And I believe Crest only has the Rhyhorn so far, but that's already very good. And then there's a couple of extras you can catch. You can catch Zubat if you don't have it yet. It does evolve within one level if you catch it in Rock Tunnel. Um, you can catch the Machop and the Cubone. Both of those will take four levels to evolve. So again, not ideal, especially not ideal for Pika because if you catch uh, Krabby in Pika uh, and you also catch Machop and Cubone, you might run out of party space to keep them all in your party for the entire four levels that they take to evolve because you already have three slots filled up with uh, Pikachu, Rhyhorn and the Nidto that you use. So if there's any other thing that you need to evolve, like a Zubat, like a, I don't know, really anything else that you need to evolve, um, that's just not gonna fit. Sheep also catching the Rhyhorn here, very nice. No Rhyhornless runs today. Love to see it. Yeah, it just feels so bad to have to walk for the entire run basically until you get the faster rides later. I'm amazed you guys can see what's going on. It's pitch black in here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, obviously we skipped the entire detour to get the whatever replaces Flash in this game. Uh, light, uh, it's not called Light, is it called Light Up? I can't remember. I, I don't know. I've never gotten it before, so I don't know. <laughs> it, yeah, I, I think I, I picked it up for completionist's sake, but... Yeah. I played the game uh, casually last year, uh, around the time of the tournament. Uh, and I also picked it up for that casual playthrough, just, you know, like you said, for completionist reason. And uh, I could not tell you. I could not tell you. It's so far out of the way, too, because you have to go all the way through Diglett Cave. Um, 
so yeah. Yeah, and I've you don't also really want to use it. Like, it's interesting that a game that was kind of made to be, uh, like, I was it, almost like a gateway drug to main series Pokemon games, getting people from playing Go into playing uh, the full kind of the full console experience. It, it it left some things out and changed some things to make that more accessible. So there's no natures for it, not no natures, there's no abilities, for example, little things like that, just to try and make it a bit easier for, but on, onboarding is the term I wanted. Uh, and so they put, and they, thus they ported over the catch mechanics. And it's interesting that for a game that did that, it's so, uh, intri can be so intricate as an actual speed run. Yeah, there's definitely a lot that goes into routing this, even though it has some fat mechanics compared to other mainland Pokemon games. Uh, there's, things there's like, so, yeah, yeah. There's so many runners that run all across the series that say that this is actually one of, if not their favorite speed run, which is weird, because in some ways it's the least Pokemon of some of a lot of the games, but. Yeah, it's the on-the-flag catch routing that you have to do that really keeps this run uh, fresh for a lot of people. And it's definitely uh, my favorite speedrun to this day as well, even though it wrecks my hands. It's also lovely to not have to deal with things like static. True, yeah, there's no abilities in yes. this game, no sturdy, no static. Uh, we don't have to deal with any of that. All right, Krasus gets the Graveler. A Graveler that's definitely going to stay alive, right, gang? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah probably. totally going to stay alive. It, it probably really is because uh, the boom strats are. I don't think Krasus is going to use those. Those are not optimal. It is, it is possible to uh, to decide to yeah to self destruct on uh, in the rocket hideout, but it's not necessarily the fastest way. Yeah, I think it's also more likely to happen in EV version because Pika just uses the right horn uh, every yeah. time uh, to get to those fights that you would potentially. Uh, need that strat for but yeah uh, like phoenix pointed out and chat is basically a beginner strat uh yeah. so which is obviously not a bad thing it can add safety to a run if that's something you're looking for but uh i don't expect crisis to go for it so say is already to rival three Wait, yeah. Four. It says Rebel 4, yeah. 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 Ah, so many Rebel fights in this game. Yeah, this is why I don't even try to go for the numbers. <laughs> Usually I just say, like, Bridge Rebel, Boat Rebel, Tower Rebel. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember whether this game has the optional Rebel fight. Uh, I do think it has, yeah. So, so this that... actually be Rebel 5, but no one calls it that. No, the one you don't do just becomes 1.5. Yeah, this is the first fight where uh, Nidoking King takes center stage because it's actually the one that goes for two of the three killing blows here with Poison Jab. If it does have that, I actually don't know how the strat works with Thrash, I'm going to be honest. Okay, it looks like Pika actually takes more of an active role, so closer to the Nidoking Queen strat as well. Yeah, the, the certain double ba battle mechanics changed over over time. So uh, way back in the day, uh, you could only use X items on the Pokemon whose turn you were using. But now that is not, but that hasn't been the case for a while. So you can uh, attack with one and then use an X item with the other to, to boost that attack. You don't have to select a full heal that definitely won't work before 
using an X item, like the good old days. Yeah, that definitely makes the strat even better, uh, or the fact that you can 2v1 most of the fights. Uh, because you can just pump your main full of X items with the other, with the support of second Pokémon. And then also Nidoking King and Nidoking Queen obviously have Helping Hand, which is another thing that boosts your uh, power in these fights. Mm, it's like Sheep is going for double edge strats with the, with the ZV. Already hit 28 in Rock Tunnel. Oh yeah, I mean, then you can definitely go for it. Uh, double edge, Eevee learns it at 28. Uh, obviously very powerful normal type, so get the same tag, tag bonus as well. Only downside is the recoil damage that you get, uh, so you have to be wary of that. Uh, and not accidentally knock yourself out with that. Isn't uh, Sheep's CV also minus defense as well? It is, yeah. It's gonna be a fun time then. So Saiyan, oh yeah, Saiyan is gonna go into the Clefairy fight here, and because he does not have the ability to one shot it with Poison Jab, he's gonna have to probably at least see one metronome here. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Thrash takes it out. I'm gonna assume no. That's just a two shot, yeah, that's what I assume. Uh, Poison Jab, of course, is super effective because Glyphari is a uh, fairy tap in this game. So weak to poison damage, uh, which means that's the only reliable one shot you really have. Double Edge is the only way that Eevee version gets through that fight in one turn, so Sheep's also not gonna have that issue. Uh, but yeah. Wing Attack is okay. uneventful, which is exactly what Cyan would have wanted. Exactly. Yeah, protect you can... would have been nice. You can get some chaotic stuff to happen from that metronome, I mean, uh... I have seen a fissure. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, a fissure that hits, that would be quite something. Uh, oh, Abra, uh, I think he already has it. Nope, goes back for it. Okay. No, Crisis got one, but Crisis I got think it, yeah. Cyan did not. Okay. Oh, that's a great catch, Sam. The other place, the seven out seven, which is uh, closer to Saladon. Uh, are the other options to catch an Abra and a Jigglypuff? This is also where Sheep might get another chance for Jigglypuff and Bullpix. Currently on Rubber Four. The Growlithe Vulpix are uh, our version exclusive, so it's Growlithe on, on Pika and Vulpix on Eevee. Exactly. Arcanine that's... is weirdly not version exclusive. Yeah, yeah, but that's because of a specific <laughs> trade where you can only get an Arcanine or, uh, yeah, for Eevee version. Eevee version get, can trade for an Arcanine specifically and uh, Pika version can trade for a Persian with the same NPC. But yeah, in general, Pika does have it better uh, when it comes to this specific version exclusive because not only is Growlithe stronger offensively, so it actually has some use in battle, uh, it's evolved from Arcanine, is also a very fast ride Pokemon compared to Ninetales, the evolved form of Vulpix, which really doesn't have that benefit. So we're probably going to see both of our Pika runners opt to use Arcanine for a while uh, after Rhyhorn has. Oh, there we go. Going for a Pidgey catch, okay. Uh, yeah, after Rhyhorn has uh, proven its worth. <laughs> it's really interesting to me which Pokemon they chose to be ride Pokemon in this. Yeah, I mean, you can ride on a lot of things that we just don't ride uh, during the speedrun because they're slow, right? Uh, I mean, there was this memorable race last year where Randall was riding on, I believe, a Kangaskhan for the entire thing. I have heard you can ride a Starmie 
You can ride I have not done it here. personally, but I've heard about it. You can only ride it on land, you can't ride it on the water. Yeah, it's Which... a little odd. But th that happens uh, a little bit during uh, AOP runs, uh, because you might select Starmie to deselect Aerodactyl as a mount in the post-game section of the run, but that's a very niche situation in which uh, Starmie could be your ride for a second. And Cyan Nails, the most important menu in the game? Yes. Yep. We were talking about it earlier, this is where we synchronize. Uh, so because there's no abilities in this game, there is a, an NPC with an app brow where you can basically pay to have everything else that spawns during the day have one specific nature uh, that you can choose. And we choose Modest here, so that's going to be plus special attack, minus attack because the main that we want to use for the last hour or so of the run is going to be the special attacker. So we want to pump that. Ooh, this, this is the dream route for sheep. Both oh. the Bullpicks and the Jigglypuff. The Bullpicks in the back was glowing. Yeah, oh, no, the experience at this point. That. Since Eevee's already level 28, you really don't care about the experience too much uh, at this point. So going for the slightly closer, not glowing Bullpicks is definitely fine. Maybe you can avoid some, some level ups that you don't need as well. Uh, the the added bonus of the added thing that goes into talking to to Madam Salad on there as well is that uh, obviously we set the date partly so that we can get the double moonstone, which is nice if it comes off, but also because it means that the clock is definitely not going to roll over between you setting the nature and you actually going to catch the Starmie. Yeah, because that would really be a shame. Imagine paying all that money in the game to get modest and then you get to Starmie and it's just, I don't know, brave or something. Yeah, and it and yeah. this is not cheap as well because it's 10,000 poker. Yeah, exactly. That really cuts into your uh, budget for later shops. I mean, it, it still works out. Uh, it's not like we're running low on X items or something, usually. <laughs> You could buy 20 magic card for that. <laughs> True. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, uh, both Saiyan and Crisis are in hideout. Crisis is doing the eradicate fight, which is very annoying in EV version. Uh, Pika does it with two controllers, which makes it a lot more bearable. Meanwhile, Saiyan, Saiyan already down there doing the first spinner puzzle. Shout outs to decent spinner speed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, uh, Eevee also gets another move here, Glitzy Glow, which is a psychic type move that sets up light screen. Uh, and it's gonna be very good against all of these upcoming poison types. The, the Marvelous Move Trainer appears in four different locations and the move they teach uh, there, they they go up by one for each different gen of evolution. So you get the fire, water, electric moves in uh, Cerulean, and then now you go into Celadon. You get the Gen Two, so the Dark and the the Psychic type, and then you get Grass and Ice when you go into uh, the Fuchsia, and you can pick up the Fairy move later uh, later on as well. Yeah, so Saladin Center is also where you can get the infamous Baddie Bad, because that's the dark type move. Uh, Same Glitzy... made it to the basement, yeah. Glitzy Glow is a special psychic type move and it sets up light screen. Is that the yes, one? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Which, pretty good. For sure. It makes uh, some of the double fights a lot safer. Uh, just getting that extra special defense boost from the light screen and obviously, like I said, being a psychic type move is going to be very good for dealing with stuff like the grammar that's on screen for Saiyan right now. This is one of the added nice things about the Let's Go Run is that because you do a lot of these battles as double battles, even though you're not necessarily supposed to, you get a chance to see moves that you wouldn't normally see on speedruns, so things like the Helping Hand or you're setting up Glitzy Glow so that you can get the light screen effect for both you and your partner. It's 
Then gonna get to my favorite part of the run, climbing on rolling chairs. Yes. I have to point it out every time. <laughs> because it's baffling to me, to this day. When I played this the first time, I was shocked that they would put this in a kid's game. Unfortunately, by the time I got this game, I, I knew what the solution was. So I, I wasn't one of the people who was kind of looking around baffled of, surely they don't want me to use the very easily slip offable rolling chair. <laughs> I mean, there's a fire extinguisher case right next to it. Just push that over. Yeah. Turn I, the bin upside down, use that. Or I maybe tried everything boxes. else. I tried everything else in that room when I played this casually the first time. <laughs> but no, it has to be the running chair. It's incredible. So there's going to be a bit of a menu here for Saiyan. You want to be full health on both the Nido and the Pika and the Rhyhorn if that has taken damage for some reason. Uh, and then you want to swap Rhyhorn and Nido King uh, into the first two slots here to do this next fight. I will say that it is it actually does make sense to have the grunt throw the lift key away rather than just, well, you beat me, you can have this. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh no, I dropped the lift key as a meme for a reason. Another spinner puzzle here and then down into the basement for Sin. Sheep on the first been a puzzle right now. I didn't catch if uh, Saiyan's right horn hit level 25. Usually want that to happen because it's going to be more reliable uh, in this next fight. It can still work well at level 24 if it has great attack, but yeah, level 25 is just what you're looking for in that right horn for this section. Because this is basically a gauntlet, three boss fights in a row, starting off with this Jesse and James fight. And this is another one of those forced double battles. So even if you do this two player, uh, player one's doing everything. Yeah, it's true for every Jesse and James fight. It's... When picking up this run, it's always a little bit confusing to go into this and expect to use the second controller but then no, it's a double fight and you just use the one controller and that's it. Rahori paralyzed. Okay, no damage though. Uh, going for... Yeah, you get these three heal items to cure the paralysis and then both hits on the right horn. Drill run takes out the Arbok, okay, so that's great. Yeah, it definitely hit level 25 in time, no, no problem at all. And then another drill run with another X attack on the right horn takes care of the wheezing. It's just very nice, a very, very good strat for the Pika side. Is just making sure to hit all of those correct pants to get to the puzzle. Gonna be right there in that same Jason James fight in just a second here. Gonna make sure to go down to the fourth floor instead of just mashing and going to the first. Meanwhile, Sane is gonna fight the second boss fight here, Archer. Uh, kind of an infamous name in Let's Go Speedrunning, but not because of this fight. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> we'll see yeah. Archer uh, a bit later in uh, Silph Co. Uh, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> I mean, we're, yeah. we're going to talk about it, but not now. We are, but not now. <laughs> uh, this is the first time you see Archer in Kanto, I think. Archer was yeah. first first appeared in Heart Gold Soul Silver. It was one of the ad when they actually started giving the, the Rocket admins names. Yeah, one of the admins that tries to bring back T 
Team Rocket in those games and uh, gets an extended role in this one as uh, Giovanni's right hand. Has a Weezing and a Gobat here, which uh, it's not the easiest fight, but it's certainly the easiest of the three, I would say, or the safest of the three at least. Press is getting to JJ. Just took out the Weezing. Sheep's those spinners right now are saying is heading to Geo 1. Seems like they're basically exactly the same time apart, like Crescent is as far behind Sane as he is uh, ahead of Sheep. So that's an interesting scenario right here. Mm. Sheep has uh, a couple of more Pokemon in the bank than, than Crisis, and yeah. Cyan has uh, has the kind of the, the on track lead as well as the as well as the most Pokemon caught overall. Yeah, Saiyan is definitely uh, in the driver's seat here. It's his run to lose, his race to lose. But the, one of the things about Let's Go is that uh, every catch has a little bit of danger about it, whether it's necessarily the look, the longer time loss of the breakouts or the little things yeah. of uh, just attack attack cycles not going your way. And there are plenty of dangerous fights all the way through to the end game, so it's never quite fully sealed. Yeah, this this run is volatile, and depending on whether Saiyan goes for safe strats later on, or if he's just going to go for PP strats, we could see some we could see some dangerous fights coming up uh, later on in the run. Because you're assigned points based on your finished position rather than uh, rather than necessarily the finishing time, it means that if you've got a decent sized lead, you can probably afford to. To maybe take things a little bit safer if you're not necessarily on PB pace, because you can still guarantee that you'll get the the three points for the win, but you don't need a certain time to qualify in pot one for the next round. Yeah, this definitely creates an interesting situation where uh, maybe if you're somewhat sure of getting first place you're gonna go for more safer strats but then the second place or the person in second place is gonna be even more incentivized to go for risky strats to uh, definitely go uh, and beat that median time you're saying there's a chance we might see one see get that we could I mean I mean once the Agatha isn't that rare uh I believe once the Agatha was actually part of my tournament strats last year. Uh, only to see Lance and Chump. We see that's not. Uh, I can't speak for everyone, but I, I don't think that many people actually went for 2C Agatha. Okay, so Sain just uh, withdrew the Growlithe. So is going to go for that early Arcanine strat that I mentioned earlier, or alluded to at least. Um, where you withdraw the Growlithe here, forgot to mark it, so he's going to have to do that later. Uh, going to sacrifice the puppy on the next Resident James fight that's coming right up at the top of this tower. And then evolve it while it's fainted and ride that knocked out Arcanine for a while because it's faster than using my horn. And this way you can also justify not using a rare candy on Ponyta to get an early Rapidash with Rapidash of course being the best ride in the game, the fastest ride in the game tied with Aerodactyl. Because Arcanine is only marginally slower, um, you can ride that for a while and just let the Ponyta evolve from uh, ambient experience. Because the the format for the for the the category that's the one is is any percent no mount skips. Uh, it, it's not as if you have to wait for a Rapidash so that you can line up some of those skips properly because they're not allowed in this category. 
Exactly. We're not going to see any mount skips. You still do want to get the Rapidash uh, for Pika as well. Arcanine is still slower, so you Rapidash, having Rapidash is still the best scenario, but um, having being stuck with just Arcanine for the late game as compared to being stuck with Rhyhorn, that's a huge difference. Definitely. Uh, and an yes. advantage that Pika has. What happens if someone unintentionally mount skips? Uh, this person has to go back and fight that fight. Like, if you I, accidentally I, skip uh, Dawson, for instance, the last trainer I thought uh, so. in Victory Road, then you just turn around and manually initiate the fight. Or, you know, risk getting disqualified. Don't do that. No man skips in this uh, tournament. Yeah, don't do that unless you're racing against me. I I'm not in this tournament, so just don't do that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Sane is in tower looking for a ghastly uh, there. It's usually the catch that everyone wants to get. If you don't have a keybone again, it can spawn there. It's just not very likely. 9% I believe to spawn, uh, but there's so few spawns that actually happen in this tower that uh, you're very rarely going to see it. Yeah, it's definitely not unheard of to go all the way through tower without seeing anything at all. By the way, both Sheep and Crest is picking up these extra Ultra Balls in uh, in the hideout. You usually don't get these on PB attempts because they're a little bit out of the way. And there's a, another three Hyper Balls, uh, Ultra Balls deck, excuse me, that was the German in me. Uh, the Another three Ultra Balls deck that you can get in the tower, saying just pick that up a little bit earlier. Um, but yeah, it's a nice backup to get that one and head out if you feel like you're running low on balls or you still have a lot of catches to go. Yes, fun fact, ultra balls are called hyper balls in German. Today I learned. Yeah. <laughs> Probably just not taking a chance with that uh, spinner there, even though you think he can skip it by hugging the wall on the bottom. Phoenix Magmar is called Magmar in German. I don't know what to tell you. I know I know what it's called in Japanese, which is the yeah. more interesting one. That is the more interesting one. I guess it would be pronounced Magma in German, but that's that's a whole other thing. No, they don't have the same name in, in German Fury. Uh just some of them do, like Onyx for instance is also is Onyx in German, so I'll just it, pronounce different. The best one is, is the German, I think it's German for Snorlax. That's, yeah, that's Relaxo, or Relaxo if you want to pronounce it English, uh, in, in an English way. It's just, so, it's so perfect. Uh, Clefairy's PP, which is in quite a lot of languages. Oh no, she's oh, hitting no. the spinner. We had it. Sheep not hugging the wall. Enough. That's unfortunate. This is uh, an annoying spinner internet because she has two Pokemon. Did Crisis have a Ghastly and it couldn't quite hit him because the fight spawned? I didn't catch that. That's definitely possible. It's cutscenes despawn encounters. Uh, if you hit the trigger there, and in that exact same moment, there's a ghastly spawn. It's just, it's just sad because yes. that's going to be gone after the cutscene. And if you're thinking, didn't we choose to to skip movies? Yes, but because yes. you actually have to advance text yourself, that's not one of. You can skip half of that, but not the other half. Exactly. Yeah, the pre-rendered stuff where there's no dialogue that you can skip, but the part where there's dialogue text boxes that you have to advance that is a cutscene in the sense that it despawns um, overworld Pokemon but uh, not a movie as the game calls it. Imagine how much shorter this game would be if you could skip every single dialogue scene by pressing what? minus or plus. 
Yeah, what the Pokemon Company declares a cutscene is wild to me. Yeah, it's even wackier in Scarlet and Violet, where yes, it is. It's, it's just not clear what is considered a movie because there's some things that clearly look like movies that still can't be skipped for some reason. Uh, but then others are. Although Pokemon love making sure that you can't get rid of speed tech, like turning off move animations and turning off turning off switch to set style. So who knows? Maybe we won't, be able, we won't even have the option to skip movies next time. Uh, that would be Sky a sad day. Don't put that bad you on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> that would be a sad day for Legends ZA speedrunning. Legends ZA will be fine. We'll just ride Mega Incineroar all the way. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Saiyan going for that relaxo right there. <laughs> Obviously we just skip this one, we don't catch it because yeah, that's one of the... These overworld spawns are uh, work a little bit different where you actually have to defeat them before you catch them. You can't just throw things at them and that makes this not really worth your while. Um, especially because it's also not an easy catch once it's defeated, so we basically always skip this. Also, I, I don't think we've talked about this at all, but this JJ fight is one of the harder fights in the game. Uh, <laughs> we didn't acknowledge it at all so far. Uh, I don't think Saiyan had any, any problems with it. And Crisis also seems to be getting through it alright. Yeah, utilizing the, the helping hand tech there, which is nice. Yeah, if your special attack is high enough there, you can uh, one-shot that wheezing by using helping hand on your partner Pokemon. The Pika version. Alright, same is on what used to be cycling roads. This is another huge catching section where you want to catch a Ponyta again to use as a ride later on. Uh, you also want to catch a Dote Duo because that's. Uh, excuse me, it's another Pokemon that you want to use for one specific fight. Uh, makes that fight a lot more consistent. And there's also a couple of other things that you can catch here, like the Psyduck, which is one level away from evolving into Golduck. If you catch a Pidgey here, you can actually evolve it all the way into Pidgeot within two levels. Um, and yeah, also Eevee can spawn here, but it's a really, really rough catch and it's also rare. So uh, you usually don't want to go for it. Yeah, there was, a, there was an Eevee that spawned for Cyan, but uh, he wanted no part of that action. Understandably so. That's not evolving the Growlithe into Arcanine. And she's going into Jane J3. What else spawns for saying here? You also want to pick up a couple of items on this uh, route, like this rare candy right here for saying. There's also some silver raspberries that you can pick up here, which obviously are more effective raspberries, so yes. gonna make catches a lot easier if you use them on the Pokemon. And okay, Sion nice. got absolutely sniped by that Dojuo, which is perfect for him. Yeah, this Do Duo also has Drill Pack. Uh, it just has it. Another amazing move that just comes with a Pokemon, so that's the reason why we want to use it later. Because there's one specific Pokemon that hard counters uh, our late game main, which is going to be relevant later. Yeah, it's for the moves that you get has perfect coverage with one single exception. Yeah.
We also didn't mention how fast Mr. Fuji runs because you, as soon as you leave Lavender Tower, you fly over to the yeah. to the Snorlax, and then oh, he just catches up with you. This man's like Fidipides, It's crazy. Yeah, see, so I'm picking up the Sephirazes here. Pony, there we go. Oh, oops. <laughs> Excellent, you talking to his Arcanine. Feeling totally carefree. <laughs> also, I want to shout out the sign that's on this route that says, um, don't throw the game, throw Pokeballs instead. Huge inspiration. If you ever feel down, let's be running. Pokemon, let's go. Just remember that sign. Crisis immediately gets the pony set, and there's a Toji right there as well. Lovely. Exactly what you want to see. Although pony is not happy to cooperate. There we go. So, Sane is done with the catches here. Gonna go through all of these very short sighted trainers. You can run so close to them, they still don't see you. It's very nice for speedrunning. And that's Pokemon Road. Uh, if you have a ride Pokemon that can fly, uh, you can actually get them out and fly with them on, on that route even before you uh, pick up the secret technique for it. And, and this is also, by the way, apparently not a movie. Yeah, there's text boxes yeah. of just saying stuff, or I think it's uh, the Pokemon that yeah, the have King a Yeah, Kangaskhan and the... and the... Crows. Yeah. But, but oh, why? Shit. Could they not have just done know. that? Maybe I also didn't mention the third and probably easiest of the trainer skips that Sheep just did right there, going into this route. Uh, you just hike the fence and you dodge that one, trainer slider set. Uh, at the beginning of Route 17. Also and gets an instant are, pony. Those are all the uh, the trainers that you are allowed to skip because you're not necessarily lining up the your ride Pokemon in a specific way to do it. It's just staying tight to walls and taking advantage of trainer vision. Or lack of it, I guess. Exactly. Just getting a side here, very nice. Meanwhile, Saiyan is gonna fly over to Pilot Town now. Uh, to the final catch section of the run. This is, yeah. I keep forgetting what it is, Route 21 going into Pokemon Mansion. You mean we're not gonna go through Sea Foam Islands? Not at all, no, no, no. We're gonna take the short route since we can't fly. And we're looking, of course, for a starry nice Chansey. Oh, Chansey? So many chances. You know it's a tournament run with us when there's like three chances. Um, yeah, we're looking for a star you here, which is going to be our main for the rest of the run. Mm -hmm. And uh, the water stone will need to evolve it. It's right there's there. There's a star in the back. Probably going to have to backtrack for that. Yeah. You want to be careful yeah. with these spinners. If you hit these at this point, they're at like level 40. And you don't have a Pokemon that can withstand that at this point. So hitting an optional here is really, really, really bad. So be careful. Uh, 1044 is the Starmie CP. Okay, thank you. That is okay. slightly below average. Average, I believe, is 1066. And all that. Can you say in 1084? Oh, 1044. Okay, yeah, 1044. Um... Slightly below average. Obviously, that doesn't have to mean anything because the CP is just the sum of your base stats, basically. Uh, there's a different formula that goes into this, but uh, it doesn't really say anything about the precise allocation of those base stats. So, this could be a 1044 with incredibly high special attack and speed that then just has very low defenses to come to this CP total. Mm -hmm. Or Wait. it could be uh, just below average across the board. It's hard to tell. Just yeah, you can addiction. get ones that, that seem good, you get a high CP and oh, actually, it's just that it's got max, it's got perfect physical attack, which yeah. is completely useless for us. 
Let's let's see. Let's see the stats here. Okay, decent speed, uh, decent special attack, I would say. Nothing to worry about. And definitely go to 4 2 here. So use two candies now to get to 45, and then use two candies later. Yeah, decent star, for sure. It's gonna candy oh, the ponytail. Candy the ponytail. Okay. Interesting. Also went to 46 on the star. So the reason why uh, you might want to go 2 and 2, so only leveling to 45 here, is that it's. Uh, makes turnarounds happen later for Starmie. I was talking about this a lot earlier in the run, but uh, friendship also matters for Starmie. Starmie turnarounds will happen at some point. And by using the rare candies stretched out like this, uh, it changes the... Well, it's kind of hard to explain, honestly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you want to try and delay turnarounds for as long as possible because double wiggly woo for crisis. Oh, so but obviously, star. don't care about those. My early star. Oh, that's um, amazing! Eleven twenty-four. Wow. Yes. Huge. I'm about that. Oh no! Come on, stay in. Because this is uh, all of the water catches have you catch with just one throw. There we go. That's what we want to see. Yeah, so you with can't just get... one controller, uh, you can't get that bonus from going at it uh, with both controllers. Yeah, the, the, there's no option to bring the support trainer out while you're, uh, while you're surfing, or sea skimming, I guess. Yeah, exactly. And catching it with two things, uh, with two balls, makes it safer. It's more likely to stay in the ball. So crisis with an incredibly, incredibly cracked uh, star. You looking for a tentacle, I believe? Uh, not a great catch. No, it's not turning around for the tentacle. Okay. Actually, let me check his tracker really quickly. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have a tentacle marked. Okay, it's just gonna go for the grammar and the rest is gonna evolve. Okay. That works. That's the grammar. So with Saiyan candying the pony, he's gonna have to pick up the Lapras candy later. You could usually skip that in uh, Pika when you go for that early Arcanine strat. But it's not uh, the Science. Yeah. Uh, Science done all of their actual catching for the run now. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's still a few pokes short of that 50 requirement that they need, but they're going to get those through through Evos or through the Wonder of Free Stuff. Yes, exactly. There's uh, two more gift Pokemon. I say more because they consider the Magic Card basically free. Um, and then there's going to be three more Evos for Saiyan, involving the Grammar, involving the... Let me see. Uh, Psyduck and the Doduo. The game laughs at you for playing an outrageous 500 poker for the for the Magic Carp. I assume they mean outrageous because it's outrageously cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, I, I don't know if 500 yen would be a lot of money for a fish in real life. I don't know, I think a five is about right, yeah. Especially because they're pretty decent sized fish. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, Crass is getting four um, Evos in a row here. That's two minutes of just waiting for Evos. That's, uh... That's a time. <laughs> yeah. But Crisis isn't... You know, this is... Uh, he's got all his catches in the bank as well. By the way, Danim just posted it in the chat that the max CP for Sayu is 1173, so... Crisis is, is a little bit below that, but it's still incredibly, incredibly good. Uh, I, I didn't actually check the... stats. I, I don't actually think he's gotten to that yet because of all of these evils. <laughs> From the glowing radicate.
Sweet. Entry round 21. He's a tanta in the back. Gonna go back. Yeah, he's for got. It. Has it? Oh, and a star. star. Okay. Perfect. Love to see it. The amount of times last year where I had to wait around and use multiple repellers to get a star to spawn during tournament races uh, was off the charts. So I'm very glad to see everyone get quick star spawns here. And it's quiz time for saying, yeah. <laughs> Playing gym quiz. You mean TM28 doesn't contain Tombstoney? <laughs> it's my What's favorite that? move. Okay, 1088 for for sheep. Slightly That's... above average. Yeah. I like to see it. More than workable. Gets a great throw on it as well, which is good. Yeah, that should be fine. If you serve a Raz, uh, as long as you don't completely miss the circle, uh, you should be fine on the star. With a regular Raz, that probably would have been a little bit dicey right there. Alright then. I did not pay attention to Cressus's star sets at all. Oh, he was leveling it up. Uh, so you're gonna have to see later when it levels up in battle. Oh, he hasn't done the menu yet. Okay, never mind. <laughs> so you're gonna see it now. Mm -hmm. Just in time for Ted. Yeah, this is the latest that he can do it. Oh, Grammar didn't see any of that Radicate experience. That's a little unfortunate, but he still had a lot of unevolved stuff in the menu. So let's see here. What's that 11 plus? Oh, well. Oh, that's not speed already. Gray speed. Good special attack. I mean, that's what you want to see. <laughs> Could have been better. The, they're not the only right. two stats that matter, but they are the by far and away the most important. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you, you do want your defenses to be good, um, so you don't get as low. But uh, as long as speed and special attack are solid, you're gonna be you're gonna be good. Uh, looks like sheep had slightly had good speed, but slightly worse special attack. Okay, I'm gonna have to look at that again when he goes to teach Scald. I think it was uh, 84 and 9, 84 speed attack and 90 speed. Okay. That's, that's fine. I mean, 90 speed is more than enough, and then. Yeah, 120 special attack here for Crisis at 40, 46. That's, that's gonna be. That's gonna be good. And then let's see what this Starmy has. Not Hepbat. <laughs> this is 45. Uh, 115, yeah. Totally fine. 115 and 45. Good stars all around. Only 43 catches here for Sheep. I think there's a couple of uh, Evos still missing. I think so. Yeah, he doesn't have a... he's looking for a coughing. Okay, there we go. And still a server of Tentacool and Dodo. And Pidgeot as well. Ah, oh, Pidgeotto into Pidgeot. He was the only one. All the moving Pokemon. Yeah. You can only pop one berry at a time, so you can't pop a Raspberry to improve the catch rate and a Nanab to stop it moving around. Yeah, that would be so nice, though, <laughs> if what you could do that. So he's about to do something interesting here, taking a water type into the electric gym. It'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it will, because uh, this time is level 46, but uh, Lieutenant Surge's Pokemon have not, like, scaled or anything. They're still in their 20s, so... Yeah. God, this we'll is just... gonna... Rip right through this, Jim. Yes. <laughs> That's uh, really the main reason why we do it this late. Because Pikachu at, I don't know, level 20, level 21, uh, where it would be if you did this right after uh, the boat, would have Let's a see. rough time here. Okay, top 
top middle can, that's good. You know that it has to be a can next to it. That's how the Maybe. mechanics work, although it could be... Oh no, he got it right. Nice. Alright. Hardest puzzle of the game, right? I mean, it's the hardest puzzle in every other game, so it must be the hardest puzzle in this game, right? I... All that this conversation makes me think of is the, uh... Is the bingo card that was posted a couple of days ago in the tournament Discord. Yeah. Very knowing nod towards that. You can't not mention the god cans. You can't. Like, in terms of in terms of actual gym puzzles throughout the series, cans is one of the very, very worst. Like the actual, n n none of this baby cans. The actual cans. Just so backwards how it works. Uh, the best gym puzzle is olive roll, don't at me. Oh, oh, we're gonna have a oh. word about that. <laughs> olive roll, I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Oh yeah, sure, I, I love to get soft locked an hour into the run. <laughs> okay, from a speedrun perspective, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I will not dispute that. Anyway, it's enough Scarlet and Violet banter. Yes. Uh, yeah. Cress is going into Blaine now. Uh, I think all of the three Starmies here should be more than able to outspeed everything on Blaine. The Starmie's very slow. Uh, you might run into trouble with the Rapidash and potentially even the Ninetales. Uh, but all of these Starmies are fast enough to outspeed both of them, I think. Yeah, you do have to be quite slow for that. For the Ninetales, yeah. Rapidash can happen occasionally. Um, it, the added advantage of, of taking the nature to modest is that obviously you guarantee the the special attack up, but you also because you're also guaranteeing uh, attack down because we don't need it. It means that you're getting at least you're not going to be minus speed at all, which is nice. Yeah, minus speed really. That's really rough. We saw that uh, last year firsthand when uh, Joker forgot to synchronize and got a plus special attack minus speed Starmie. That was the time. I believe that was what he got. And that's where you can really see that this route only works with the neutral speed Starmie. <laughs> yeah, there's so many little things in the game that just work out so perfectly for the for the route as it, as it was devised. Uh, by the way, Erica's gym is a great example of trainer vision isn't real. Yeah, we don't have to fight anything here. We can dodge every single trainer. And it's not even like a like a skip skip like the other vision skips. You can just kind of hug the the bushes here and not be in any trouble. And Erica, like Surge, is quite low leveled compared to the army that we're using at this point, so it's another very easy fight. Just use Psychic three times. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, do, don't be like me and just kind of mindlessly manage and accidentally use Scald or, or Hydro Pump on, on the first Pokemon here, because Hydro Pump can kill the Tangela, but Scald definitely can if you don't crit. Yeah, it helps that most of the... Well, actually, I say it helps, it kind of doesn't help that there's only one pure Grass type in Gen 1. That is, that is the Tangler. All yeah. the others are... Uh, there's a couple of Grass Bug and then some others, but mostly Grass Poison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and considering that this Tangler is, I think, the only one we fight, uh, and it's so underleveled compared to us, that really makes it a lot easier to take care of. Okay, Cross is going yeah. right side. I was just about to say, I, I don't think I've ever seen anyone go right side there, but I guess I, it works. I cannot say I have. I think this affects the cans for it. Oh no, he's still got it. Okay. Guess that's another way to, to manip the cans. Alright. Sheep's getting through lane right now. Shouldn't have any issue either, considering, like, the reason you would go. 3 plus 1 candy, so leveling to 46. 
would be to get your speed a little bit higher to um, potentially outspeed the Rapidash if you have a slow Starmie. So, with she purposefully only leveling to 45 here, yeah, the Starmie definitely outspeeds the Rapidash. Sane is gonna fly just to Saladin Pokemon Center, uh, which is faster than walking there because you'd have to catch through a bush. But he's not gonna go for the little animation skip that was discovered a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, if you go Ooh. ever so. Oh, it's an encounter. Ooh. A little Pidgey in the way. And if you go ever so slightly closer to the Celadon Gym, when you act, uh, there we are. When you act, when you activate the uh, activate flying, then it skips because you're going up in the balloons. But obviously, the risk is that you can try it and then accidentally just walk back into Erica's gym. Yeah, it's the, the tiniest little optimization. Not necessary. Uh... Really? Yeah, we mentioned it earlier, but uh, Lieutenant Search gives us uh, Thunderbolt, which we're going to teach to Starmie to round out its type coverage with a water or with two water type moves, a psychic type move, and this uh, electric type move. It covers every single type, basically, uh, every single type combination in some way, or it's going to at least hit for neutral damage. Um, yeah. With with which, one exception. With one exception, and that exception is coming up for Saiyan right here. That's this blue fight. Blue starts off with an Executor, which of course is Grass Psychic type. And um, it resists every single move that Starmie has, so we can't really do it with Starmie. There's a couple of solutions for this. The easiest is to use Dodrio here and uh, Drill Pack the executor for super effective damage so if you manage to get a doduo on that 17 this is the time that it comes in handy there's a couple of backups for this if you don't get a doduo uh you can use rapid ash and fire blast though of course that is quite inaccurate and what we found out last year during the tournament is that you can actually catch a magmar and fire punch the executor as well Of course, catching Magmar is pretty risky. You have to catch Magmar, which is not not great. Yeah, I, I would know something about that. I, <laughs> I had a rough encounter with a Magmar last tournament. <laughs> and Cheap nailed the cans as well, because sho what a shocker. Turns out the can puzzle is set every time. Best what you're supposed to do is... is is, is yeah. beat the trainers and they give you clues as to which bins you need to check in but it, it doesn't change at all ever so you just go through yeah like i said best decision they ever made uh for this remake to not make them completely random like they were before but instead have it be an actual puzzle you know uh which just coincidentally also makes it easier for us as speedrunners because we can just memorize the cans save and save them before archer two Archer 2 is I respect it. Yeah, is known to just destroy runs. Is this the worst fight in the run? Yes. Yeah. Yes. This, this really, as, <laughs> there are more dangerous fights, but this fight, if it drags on longer than it has to, it loses you so much time. Because, well, this is a true double fight. So there's uh, just one of our Pokemon in this fight, which is the Starmie. And then two enemy trainers and the rival Cubone, that's our ally here. And uh, the game takes forever to decide which moves the three AI Pokemon will go for. It's like a 10 second lag each turn. So if for some reason anything goes wrong, you can't get the three, four, five turn archer that you're looking for. Um, every, every extra turn is going to add like 30 seconds, it's ridiculous. And it's even worse if one of you gets a status condition. Oh yeah, for yes. sure. Uh, but... the, the true double fight gets my vote for the worst fight in any Pokemon game where they have a true double. Definitely, this, this, this fight just sucks. Uh...
I didn't actually pay attention to which opening saying got here or how many turns that was for him. It doesn't seem to be too bad right now. That's definitely a good bond rank. The issue is, is he in Sucker Punch range right now? He might be, so he's gonna have to heal, which is not ideal. If you are healthy enough to survive another Sucker Punch from Radicate, he could just take out the Golbat and then hopefully... Uh, Ooh, got crit though. Oh, but the Radicate's down. Yeah, so this is this is done now. It's just the one extra yeah. time for the year. Protect well, the special opening, okay. Luckily gets a free heal after this, so... Yeah, that's the nice thing about this. Very convenient free heal, getting all of those PP back because I think you're basically out, out of Psychic after this fight, so... Uh, a Crisis also taking the opportunity to catch a Jigglypuff, which means he doesn't have to pick up one of the gift Pokemon later. That's an interesting choice. Because those gifts are definitely faster than catching a Jigglypuff. Uh... Yeah, he unmarked Lapras. Okay. Would he have wanted the extra experience from it? I guess it probably doesn't do that much for you at this point. No, it really doesn't uh, doesn't do anything. I'm I'm gonna say, uh, like I said, interesting choice, and Amber echoed that in the chat, um, coincidentally. But uh, yeah, uh, Lapras taking the Lapras, even if you don't need the Lapras candy, uh, is always faster than catching anything. Uh, just barely faster, but it is faster. So um, yeah. It's also safer as well, I guess, because there's no risk that the Lapras decides to not be gifted. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can't get motion control on a gift Pokemon. Anyway, it's, it's not like it's a huge deal. It's like a couple of seconds slower here to go for the Jigglypuff catch. Either way, uh, saying on JNJ4, the easiest just in James fights because you just psychic uh, both of them. The only thing that can be annoying here is if the Weezing uses Thunderbolt on Starmie and paralyzes it. Because then you definitely have to heal outside of combat. Which uh, you could skip if you just don't take damage on Starmie. Like ideally you want to see Thunderbolt on Dodrio here. This is the nice thing about having the Dodrio as a partner. Is that because it's also weak to Thunderbolt. It, it oh, might. okay. Oh. Not, okay, though. it doesn't get paralyzed. That's fine as well because now you can uh, use Dodio's turn to heal back to full. But if it also gets paralyzed, then you can't heal that in battle. You're probably going to heal the paralysis in fight and then going to have to heal sometime before Sabrina. After Headbutt's Golden Thunderbolt, Mega Drain feels like a real downgrade in terms of TM. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it is the improved Mega Drain. I think it's like 80 base power, but... Oh, uh, okay. I take it uh, back then. It's still it's a good move. It just doesn't work for Starmie, so we don't care about it. No, when you play Pokemon, you go through a cycle of when you first play as a kid, you kind of you, you get a favorite and then you just use it the entire way and maybe don't care too much about everything else. And then when you play it a little bit more experience, you get, you know, you get a nice diverse team with lots of type coverage. And then you become a speedrunner, and then you go back to what you did at the start, where you find one Pokemon you like and just load it up the whole way. <laughs> I mean, it works for me, Starmie is definitely one of my favorite Gen 1 Pokemon. Yeah, it's really nice that, start, that as a Pokemon that's been around since Gen 1, it lets go, provided the perfect environment to get its time in the spotlight. Alright, let's look at the Archer Card for Crisis here. Saiyan is just going to do the Giovanni fight. This one is pretty easy, just set up an extra special attack and, and sweep the fight. Basic yep. speedrun strat. Uh, let's see which opening Crisis gets. I don't think Crisis saved. Oh, okay. Protect, gotcha. self-destruct. Uh, that's the... I would say the slowest setup. Uh, the one most likely to give you a 5 turn Archer. Uh, the best one, the one that gets you a chance at a three turn is uh, self-destruct no protect because then you can take off both the muck and the electro to turn one. Yes. And, and then the electro 
here. Go ahead. Sorry. Electro also has a chance to go for Thunderbolt here, which is potentially more dangerous because, of course, it's super effective against Starmin if you get paralyzed during a healing deficit. But uh, it is also the most consistent opening for a four turn fight. So I actually prefer to self destruct protect as an opening. It's also nice if, uh, if you do get the protect self destruct lead if Cubone goes for focus energy, because Crits can maybe save you some some bits later on, but uh, just went for the right this time. Honestly, the only reason why you would prefer uh, Cuba and go for uh, energy uh, focus energy right there is that it doesn't it isn't going to use it then when it actually would have been better to use Bumerang later. It always yeah, sucks sure. to see it go for Bumerang when it could have just uh, to see it go for focus energy if it could have just used Bumerang on Radicates. Yep, fair point. Also, Crisis just about hung on there. I think that might be literally 1 HP. Now Sheep's going into uh, his Archer fight. One of the other things about Let's Go is that there's no held items, so it's not even like you could you could slip on like a Focus Sash or a Focus Band to, to help you survive things. Uh, Crisis just calced it. Alrighty. What are we getting here for sheep? Self distract, no oh, protect, traffic no opening. Protect. Zane has left Sith Cole, just picking up the Porygon. Nice and quick gift. Yep, that's his 50. That's 50, yeah. First one to complete his catch round is going to go and shop. Last shop in the run. Going to stock up for all of the late game fights, some healing items, a bunch of X items, and some repels as well because we don't want any catches anymore. So we just force everything to despawn <laughs> by using repels for the rest of the run. I'm guessing because he bought some uh, X special defenses, he's going for one he's right on E4. Come on, keep on. Cuba goes for a bummerang here, that's his three turn, I think. No, oh. there it is! Oh! Ah, oh, you hate to see it. Okay, yeah, that's the four turn then. You did say that's the reason why you want the focus energy earlier. Uh, <laughs> thanks, unfortunately, Sheep, for demonstrating why. It likes to go for that when uh, it targets Golbat, because obviously Golbat is going to be immune to Bumerang. Uh, so when Golbat's last on the field together with Eradicate, uh, you occasionally see the Cubone go for. Focus energy here. Uh, this is another thing I think where also the fact that there's no abilities comes into play because it means the Weezing's not levitate, which might also for force a more likely focus energy than uh, than using boomerang. But of course that doesn't happen because because abilities don't exist. Yeah. Yeah. Or Weezing has invisible neutralizing gas, whichever you prefer. <laughs> Right, Saint stepping up to Sabrina here, very clean uh, teleporter movement through the gym. It, it doesn't bear into question how uh, Sabrina's gym has this TARDIS like effect. I, I've, been wondering, I've been wondering that since I first entered this gym. Like, how is it oh, so much like bigger it, on the inside? It's got an entire oh. city inside it. Yeah, I, I feel like there's like, I mean, you're teleporting up to the rooftops. I think that's that's what's supposed that's what it's supposed to be. I don't know, the rooftops of Saffron. It's just it's just psychic mind tricks. We'll go with that. Uh, got turn one light screen, which is good. I'm 
I do like the Time Lord hype cannon for Sabrina, it makes her even cooler. Sabrina's definitely one of the coolest gym leaders, I think. Yes. I don't think Sam went for the X. Did Sam go for the XP? Doesn't yeah. Matter. He did. Uh, uh, I think so. I mean, actually, he might have just gone for the X. Yeah, I think they went. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> uh, my brain is like a sponge. It soaks up lots of information and there's also massive holes in it. This time he's definitely going to hit all of the necessary thresholds uh, from looking at the 48 stats right there. I think it's at 127 special attack, 127 speed. There's one more speed threshold that you need to clear at this point, which is the 127 speed of the Pidgeot on the next drive of five. You need to add speed that. Um, but since you're going to gain two more levels until then, up to level 50, uh, this time is definitely going to add speed. So no worries for Saiyan. Uh, and then the special attack also is good enough to potentially go for some ranges in Koga's gem and beyond. Also, we do we actually do fight Sabrina in order because she's the sixth gym leader, which it. But we definitely got there in the right way rather than just <laughs> dotting all around the map. Yeah, it just coincidentally works out like that. And here's uh, Crisis getting the free Porygon. Which I assume is Pokemon Company making up for doing it dirty in the anime all these years. <laughs> That's true. Did nothing wrong. Oh, Porygon. Right. Yeah, it was yeah. scapegoated by Big Pika. This is, a, this is a debate for a different time. Saying goes for early teeth. That's good to know. Uh, I was going to see if Saiyan uh, did his math correctly and got to 50. I mean, his counter says 50, so I'm going to hope that uh, that's actually the amount of Pokemon he caught. Didn't mismark anything. Uh, but yeah, of course, Kogus Gym is the one where uh, the 50 catch count comes into play, because you're going to get kicked out if you haven't reached that number. My crisis entering Sabrina's gym here. Sabrina, funnily enough, wants to see a Pokemon that's level 45 or higher, which she does not have. She would not get let into her own gym. <laughs> Actually, how many gym leaders wouldn't get let into their own gym? I mean, I, I, I can't judge. A lot of them you can't really judge because uh, Brock, I don't know, might have a water type or a grass type somewhere in, in one of his boxes, right? Mm. Uh, we don't know. We've no um, idea how many different Pokemon Koga's caught. Mm. Blaine obviously does have the key because he wouldn't be able to get in otherwise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Misty's fine. I, his time is definitely higher than level 15. Yes. Uh, well, I don't think have. Erica has any cute Pokemon. <laughs> that's just that's just me. It would be so I funny if Pokemon there was one Pokemon what do you that just mean? wouldn't get accepted. Like just one specifically, <laughs> and that she's like, no, absolutely not. Aiden playing nice on the same screen. Love to see it. Yeah, Caden is the true gym leader. Uh, he can definitely cost you a lot more time than Koga himself. Koga just likes to use spam protect, which is annoying, but Caden has a mech that knows minimize, so if things go very wrong, you could be stuck there for like 11 turns. Yeah, it turns out the secret ninja techniques are. Uh, toxic protect minimize slash double team. Who knew? Oh wow, I'm like shocked. They are the worst kind of person to, to play online. 
Is he really enjoying this? Hayden, yeah, you feel superior for sure. Okay, well, Saint does get poisoned here, turn one, which is not what you love to see. You want to heal that immediately because otherwise the toxic stalling is going to start. Uh, and also because uh, any Pokemon that uses toxic in this gym immediately always follows it up with protect. So you know you get a free turn to just heal the poison. I also really enjoy Koga's arm fishnet. Uh, if, if I were a cosplayer, I would try for Koga's look. Crest's star has the exact same special attack at 48 that Saiyan's star had, 127. Huh. So that's neat. Huh. Uh, I didn't catch the speed though. So yeah, Crest is through Sabina now. She's entering the gym. And Saint just finishing up Koga. Which means there's only one more gym ch uh, gym challenge left for Saiyan, which obviously is the uh, Viridian City gym. And we'll surely we'll walk right in. I know, surely it's open, right? Surely nothing's like soft us from getting in there. <laughs> Surely there's not like two minutes of cutscene that have to happen before that. <laughs> yeah, I guess we do have to pick up another one of those secret techniques right here. The uh, strength secret technique. Strong push, I just have I believe. to point out yeah. that the warden says that you need to grit your teeth to, to do this and he didn't have his teeth earlier. <laughs> that's why he couldn't teach you. <laughs> I mean, there would have been also some sort of, I don't know, communication barrier without his teeth. Considering that he talks gibberish, uh, if you talk to him while he doesn't have his teeth. Yeah, you need to feed him the teeth, yeah. so, feed him the teeth, you need to give him the teeth so he can then eat a sandwich with you, which gives you the power to push the rocks. That's how HMs work, right? You eat sandwiches and you get bigger? Yeah, it's all about sandwiches. And... Bright flash and lights that follow. Okay. Oh, Saiyan doesn't get the animation skip here. Loses a second to the rival walking down a couple of steps to deliver the rest of this uh, dialogue. If you enter closer to the sign uh, of the gym, then uh, the rival just keeps standing where he is. I did not know that. It's another one of those micro optimizations. Okay, Crest is on Caden right now. Let's see how that goes for him. Forgot to Ooh. put the X specials in that slot. Also gets Toxic Heal, which you never want to see, because now you need to heal that and hope that Protect actually comes next. Nope, goes for Minimize. Nope. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, Protect. Oh, he Protect after that. Come on, hits, hits. Okay, good. Okay, we're good. Only wasted one turn, one extra turn with the minimize. Yeah, you want to scout the B drill here, and it's always going to die to uh, God if you're still at plus two, saves your psychic PP because you do have to be a little bit careful with uh, psychic PP during this part. Can't just spam it everywhere. Keep finishing up in Sabrina's gym. Oh. Everyone's about a gym apart from each other, it looks like. Yeah, this is another one of those parts where you just fight three gyms in a row, uh, so that becomes very apparent. Yeah, we've also, obviously, now that we've reached the stage where everyone's got their 
got their catches done and out of the way, then it's just about uh, kind of the, the in-fight RNG and uh, kind of adapting off that and executing. Speaking of in-fight RNG, is Sen going to go for... Yeah, 1C. He's going to go for the Hydro Pump okay. Gamble. Go for the pump! Okay, first Hydro Pump of the run, and this one is skippable if you go for two controllers. Uh, in this fight, which obviously is slower because you have to summon and de-summon the second uh, controller, but perfectly valid to go for the Hydro Pump here. That would one-shot this Nidoking. King. Let's see. Okay, hit. Never in doubt. Very good. 85% is like child's play. <laughs> Alright, Christ is finishing up with Koga right now. Also got poisoned, turn one. Um, but like I said earlier, Koga's fight can't really go all that wrong. No, he's not. It's not going to lose you a minute because of absolute minimized shenanigans. <laughs> also, she successfully in the gym, so marked everything correctly, which is which is a relief. And one more Caden fight here to round out the European trio. Staying going for onesie strats. Uh, Jail body three or no, four. Geo. Gym leader Geo. This is Geo 3, yeah. <laughs> Chris is going for late teeth, by the way. And uh, Sheep got through Mac, so no shenanigans for that Caden fight. Nice. Which means he gets a little bit closer to Chris this year. Uh... Speed draw protected, though. Yeah, Saiyan went for 1C on... Oh, we're gonna have to watch that one more turn. Oh, actually it goes for a heal here, interesting. Interesting strat. So there's this hate strat for the Geo fight where you... Uh, do you see this with Rapidash? Uh, which basically makes this fight impossible to die on. Uh, but... You cannot see one C. It's just a little bit riskier. The Saiyan so far hasn't really been doing any of the marathon save strats, so I assume he's gonna just one C everything. Yeah, with the exception of the save on on Archer two. That's true. Yeah. He's got a, a big enough lead that actually one of the fights can go slightly wrong, and he can probably. Crisis is on the Felling Town. Oh no, no! <laughs> oh. oh, that's rough. That's rough. That can happen sometimes in the heat of the moment. It's, it's just a little slow it's... to have to walk up there. But because you're on uh, on a repel, you're not gonna see any Pokemon or accidentally yeah. trigger an encounter or anything. Also gonna get the walk down here. So, not skipping the animation either. And it's going to get uh, the Mega Bracelet and the Mega Stones that we'll absolutely definitely use. Yeah, we we, we will totally use all of them. This well, one. we'll definitely see a Mega Evolution. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to use it. Uh, yeah, staying out of the gym. So coming up on the, I believe it's Ravel 5. On well, this one, I really don't know. That's the correct number, but the pre-victory road rival fight. Yeah, the last rival fight, because you do the Elite Four and then you win. Yeah, there's definitely no fight after a land, so he's the he's... should be good. Yeah, uh, Sheep's done with Koga now as well. So there should really, really be no risk uh, for Tain on this fight, since again his star outspeeds this Pidgeot. Uh, yeah, Pidgeot. He's going for 2C on this. 
On the rabbit fight, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You always go for two CMS. Uh... Because you need all of those extra items to get through it. So um, set up the X special here to just have that plus two under your belt. And then you need to use X speed turn two here. Because um, the X speed is calculated before the items are used. So uh, if you don't use X speed here and Jolteon comes out next, you're going to get outsped and you're going to get hit by an electric tap move that takes you out. So... Yeah, dynamic speed comes in with uh, with sword shield, so the speed order updates after every move, but this is still it updates at the end of every turn. Yeah, so Saiyan actually sees Jolty on third here, so definitely the correct thing to do to go for the speed second there. Now because the yeah because the Marac comes out last you can psychic the Marac so you don't have to spoil it. If you have plus two here you need that super effective damage to take it out. Which is slightly slower because of that extra super effective text box. Uh yeah, this way. Does not Price is going with the two controller strap for for the New Year King. I can absolutely respect that. That's yeah. not a gamble that you need to do <laughs> in a tournament setting. Uh and Sheep actually gets the animation skip here. Nice. Close enough to the sign nice. to not get the walk done. Alright, it's time for the badge checks for Sane. Want to be careful to not mesh through these and accidentally talk to your ride. I've done that on multiple occasions. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's so easy to forget that. Basically, every button is an A button in this game. I wonder if it's possible to use the ride Pokemon to skip past these. I'm sure we've, I feel like we, I know that we've tried and we've not found a way yet, but imagine yeah. if you could. We have tried it, uh, I believe, and I'm not an expert on this at all, but I believe the window that these guards can see you in is a little too wide to skip it using the same mechanic that the mount skips utilize. So, uh, because the mount skips only skip like part of a frame that you can line up exactly with that, uh, or part of a pixel, I should say, that you can line up exactly with that uh, trainer line of sight that works for the trainers. But because that quote unquote hitbox from the guards is a lot wider than that skipping it with the mounts is impossible at least that's what we currently think also saying going for 2c naomi uh that's definitely the riskiest one to go 1c on uh, so good choice in my opinion <laughs> yeah they're kind of balanced they're not going uh, completely all-out attack, so to speak. They're kind of balancing and, and raying it and kind of weighing up the risk rewards. As you say, if, if you miss the Hydro Pump here, you can be in a, in a world of trouble if you don't if you don't to control. Yeah, because you always, even with the Hydro Pump, you still need to set up one turn, so you're going to get hit at least once by Kangaskhan, which brings you in range of dying to another attack from it if you miss that Hydro Pump. So uh, that's what makes this fight so dangerous. And why so many runners use two controllers for it, even in PP attempts. You sheep accidentally shaking the wrong Joy-Con and playing with Eevee for a bit. Oh no. We love to see Eevee, but... Uh, in a race. <laughs> not optimal, for sure. You can, you can get some pets after we finish. Yeah, it deserves it. Alright, Crisis beating Giovanni. I should be also going for the 2C strat against that Nidda King. Playing it safe, just wanting to get this race across the line. Yeah.
Queen's Cross is also now coming up on that next rival fight. And looks like Sheep is going to go for that to see Giovanni Strat that I mentioned earlier. This is a little bit slower. Usually you don't like, or the reason why we opt out of using 2C for every fight is that it's going to be more inputs every turn to advance to the next turn, right? Because you always have to decide what the second Pokemon does. But because Rapidash just instantly dies to Earthquake in this fight, uh, you just get one extra X item that you can use for free. And then those extra inputs just fall away starting in turn two. Uh, it's still slightly slower than uh, the 1C variant because um, the game still thinks of it as a 2v1 fight, so there's still a little bit of extra lag. Uh, but it's a really good alternative to the PP attempt strat if you want to play it a little bit safer. Yeah, again, it's about weighing that risk reward of. Okay, nice. saying nice. taking a little bit nice of time skip. with the Alexa skip, but no problem at all. Uh, that's another one of those. You hug the wall really tight, and her her field of vision doesn't doesn't spot you. It's. Uh, especially if you're on a really good pace or you're in a close race and you get a, your palms get a little bit sweaty that is one of those that can easily you just stray out a little bit too far and then you get clogged oh hello biscuit sorry cat just jumped on desk oh yes luckily not uh not frozen. No skull needed. Yeah, getting through this fight, Carolyn is another one of those Elite Four fight, uh, not Elite Four, Victory Road fights that can be really, really annoying because of that jinx. Uh, it can freeze you, which you can break out of with Scald, of course, but you have to hit a Hydro Pump for this one. Uh, and if you miss that a bunch of times in a row, you can get really really trolled into spending like two minutes on this fight. <laughs> Which I believe that actually happened on my current EV PB, though I haven't run EV in quite some time. A 20 pushes for Saiyan coming in. Yes. A solid minute of just walking a step, pressing A, walking another step, pressing A, 20 times over. And you can't even swag boulder in this. No, not at all. Oh. And the rubber fight starting with a sheep. On the screen right now is Dawson, the fourth and final uh, required fight in Victory Road. As a lick attack. Seriously uh, skipping. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dawson's a lick attack which has power web that's quite scary, so you do have to look at your health coming out of that Caroline fight. Uh, yeah, this is actually really low. Yeah. Okay, Saiyan realizes that he forgot to heal, I think, and summons a second controller here. Because power up could have definitely killed here. Yeah, Crest is also going for to see Naomi. I will never judge anyone for doing that. I will. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I won't. <laughs> I, I, I do exactly the same. Mr. Hydro, but the Khan outrages the Rapid Ash instead. Yeah, now you can just set up another X, atta X special attack here in Scald at plus four. That's enough to take out the. Kankaskan, which is the beauty of this uh, 2C strat for the fight. Saying not going for the full restore. 
Okay, that would indicate to me that he's planning on doing two Sea Agatha. I guess we're gonna see. Uh, done with Victory Road. On a very fast pace, though. But I do think with how far he is ahead currently at this point in the run, safety strats might be the way to go. Yeah, through your one-ish pace, I think so too. I think, if I recall correctly, it's been a while, but I think we we kind of Bring figured out, out the that. Lapras. Yeah, there we go. Oh, Lapras strats. <laughs> I know who's going to be happy about that one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's the thing I can, you can do in Pika. Uh, that makes this very safe. And uh, it's only slightly slower than PB pace uh, strats. Well, yeah, definitely a good decision, I think, to go for safety strats here. Uh, you just want to get it over the line in first place at this point to get those nice three points going into the second Swiss round. I didn't see where Saiyan's uh, specialist app was, but he only used two uh, egg specialist apps. Yeah, I saw him go for Scald against uh, Lickitung earlier, which if you have worse special attack, you have to go for Psychic there. So I assumed he had good enough uh, special attack to go for just the two X specials on this fight. Safety turn. Uh, does have to go for Hydro Hump here on, on Jinx, so it can't have been that good. Uh, a little bit of an extra gamble that he's taking. But it paid off. It seems to be through the fight pretty cleanly. One more. Yep, just one more mod. Grass is coming up on Alexis Kip. Gets it. Very nice. Very nice. Got the Bruno 1x special and then just attack. Yeah, and if you only set up to plus 4 on uh, lower line, then you're really in no danger of getting Earthquake plus Fainted to death. It's not real, right? I've never seen it. Yeah, it doesn't exist, no. What am I even saying? Yeah, this is going to be a straightforward Bruno fight. I mean, Bruno is the most straightforward Elite Four fight, so... Not much to say about that. Chris has got through Caroline's, Caroline's Jinx, and Sheep is on Nelson right now. So everyone's gearing up for the final stretch of the run here. Will we see say and save for Agatha? I actually don't remember how Lapras strats work for this part. I don't think you... Hmm. Again, because you skipped the first star, I feel like he has to, to see Agatha now. Because otherwise if you get paralyzed, if you don't uh, pop love out of it, then... There's really no way out of the fight, you're just screwed. Yeah, 7 second controller, not gonna save. Not save it, okay. Yeah. With 2C I think this fight is free, so saving is probably not necessary. 
with affection, obviously the downside is that you you know you hit super effective moves, you use items, your Starmie turns around and shows how much it loves you, but it also does have benefits as well. And those benefits are that you can live on one HP when you maybe shouldn't be supposed to, and you can also uh, shake off status conditions. Yeah, that power of love is can come in clutch specifically in this fight if you do it once he uh, against Agatha because uh, Starmie can shrug off the paralysis a little bit early and um, saves you a turn or potentially even two I think over having to heal it uh, with the full restore. Gets put to sleep here which is a little bit annoying against Caroline's Jinx is another thing that it can do. We got lovely kissed. On. Okay, it's the pump. There we go. Let's do it as well. Uh, because Gen 1 doesn't have enough ghost Pokemon, here's another Gengar. <laughs> Crassus is picking up the first star. I mean, one evolutionary line of ghosts that are also poisoned this isn't enough for you for Gen 1. Yeah, I mean, it, it, works out, it works out quite nicely for the Starmie because it means you've got an easy, easy super effective damage against the ghosts. And with X items, you can just outspeed them and, and one shot. But the lack of ghosts and the fact that there are no dark types native to Kanto means that it just adds to Starmie being particularly potent. Yeah, Cross is about to start his Elite Four journey, uh, heading into the, or the Indigo Plateau. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna start the Lance fight here. I didn't see these. Did he yeah. keep the second controller out, or is he gonna summon it after you have already got the second controller out? Yeah, there's a couple of different strats you can do. Uh, there's a strat where you start the fight with one controller and then call the second one in uh, in turn two. There's obviously the PB strat where you just do it all with one controller. Uh, and then the Lapras strat, strat apparently just starts out with the Lapras. Return Hyper Beam. Free recharge, free turn. There we go, yeah. It's so nice to just be able to set up all of those X attacks in such a short amount of time. You can skip the X special defense when you go in with two uh, controllers and then just set up the X speed and the three X special attacks over the course of a couple of rounds while already hitting the enemy. So that's what makes up, kind of makes up for all of the extra inputs that you have to do for having a second Pokemon on the field. I had a temporary heart in mouth moment there when Cyan clicked missed because I confused it for Haze. <laughs> uh, mist is, it, it has the same effect as a guard spec where it prevents uh, your side from getting stat dropped. It doesn't, you're not going to get stat dropped. I think it's more about uh, giving the Lapras has got to do something and that's the quickest thing it can do. Yeah. Chris also just did a Hydro Pump on Jinx, so it's also going for the very same approach there as uh, a same one. And that's that's the Dragonite. And with that, there's only one more fight left for Saiyan. But we're not champions? Saiyan's not champion right now? Nah, he sadly isn't on a 258 pace. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but I thought, I thought one was the champion. Well, there's another one. What? What? There's two? This is getting no, out of hand. It's one again. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, okay, it's saving before uh yeah. champion fight. And it looks like Sheep's gonna take the Dodrio in with him. 
Yeah, that's, that's, that's a, uh, yeah. I think that's standard. Yeah, that's a good strategy that you can do uh, on EV version. Uh, basically, yeah, I, I think he's gonna do the the lance strat that I talked about a couple of minutes ago, where you start the fight with one controller and then summon the second one. Enchant you. But I guess we're gonna see when we get there. So yeah, uh, we have to fight the rebel again as the champion, obviously, to beat the game. He ha he starts off with a Mega Pidgeot, which is really <laughs> tough. Uh, ends many of PvP's run because you usually obviously go into this with one controller, and uh, you're very vulnerable to crits while setting up X items. But with this strat, two con uh, two controllers, two Pokemon out on the field. Uh, Way less likely to die here. Yeah. I suspect Bruno. And yeah, like I suspected, is gonna go for once he. Apparently, all the way through, he hasn't deposited anything or hasn't, hasn't withdrawn anything. Does save for Agatha. That would be a big way for, for Sheep to, to leap for a crisis if Crisis were to were to white out here without yeah. saving and go back yeah. to the start of the E4 and then Sheep's just flat out ahead. Yeah, definitely. I mean now if he if he dies on Agatha, he would still be roughly like a, a little bit ahead of Sheep, which uh, I think it's a good idea to save here for sure if you want to go for 1C strats. And there's the power of love. There's the power of love. Very, very nice for Cassis. One of the horrible things that can happen with, uh, with the Wansi Agatha fight is that you don't, is that you get powered, and then, uh, so you heal the para, and then you get crunched, defense dropped. And you can just, yeah, you can get looped. Yeah, that basically puts you into into a heal deficit again, or um, the fact is that you, if it attacks you with crunch again from full, then it's going to put you into quick attack range for the go bat later on. So it, it's a rough situation to be in if you get defense drop there. Anyway, uh, Tain is basically done right now. Uh, just going to match through the last cutscene of the game. This should be a 301 finishing time, which yeah. is the fastest time in the tournament. Yeah, that's so a far. really good time. Yeah, it's an excellent time, yeah. Uh, huge win for Saiyan. I that mean, crisis? considering... Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, considering that he did a couple of the, the kind of the slower sofa strats at the end as well, this is a really exceptional time. Absolutely agree. There it is. 3-1-42. Amazing time for a race. GG to Saiyan. GG. Uh, G. Meanwhile, Crisis is still in a good pace to beat the current median time, which is a 3-0-9 by Sandy. Uh, so, again, you want to beat that median time as a second place finisher to get two points instead of one in this Swiss format. Uh, uh science, yeah. science time of 30142 would put in would be good for tide sick on the Pikachu leaderboard. So <laughs> that is that's the that's how good that run was and he made it look pretty pretty effortless. Yeah. I should just going for one C on Lance and oh, got crits. Well, that can happen. I'm not sure if he said before Lance. He definitely said before Agatha, he of said, course. I think he said before Lance. Okay, which means he's still ahead of sheep. But this is a race now. This is a race yes. now, yes, for sure. Going 
gonna make it gonna make it close in the last couple of fights here because it takes a while to load back into the game i think it's like 45 seconds that you lose just on the reset alone uh Need it safe, okay. Goes for one C again. So nothing can change this man's mind. Uh Fritz are only one in twenty-four, he'll be fine. I mean fingers crossed, right? Hey. Man, it's uh, turn to time two. Set up an extra special defense. Set up an extra speed. And then three extra special attacks, and all the while you don't want to get crits at all. Okay, gets another free okay, turn here. One. But he's gonna get hit one more time. Okay, he's fine. Yeah. You can heal now as well. I'm gonna heal. If you get hit by, uh... Hit by the heart beam again. Yeah. You get that free turn of recharge to just heal on the fight, which is slightly faster than having to go to the menu outside of battle to heal before the champ fight. So, uh, this fight would have been a good lance fight to have the first time around. <laughs> uh, as it stands, Crisis really has to hope to not get crit again on... on champ. One of those weird scenarios where you kind of you want hyper beam to hit so you get the free turn to heal rather than have hyper beam miss. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think I would agree actually. Hey sheep going for the one C the two C strat on lands. Yeah, this basically works, works in a way where you set up your X speed uh, in turn 1, get hit for the full amount of damage without, you know, setting up that X special defense. And then you can basically start hitting after that with Dodrio using its turns to continually pump more X special attacks into you. Yeah. Cyan got through got through champ with no problems, but it's not a, a free fight, certainly. No, especially if you go into this with one controller. I mentioned it earlier. This Mega Pidgeot is no joke. And it gets to attack you so many times. And as long as you're not full health, if it crits you, you're basically dead. Um, but let's just, again, fingers crossed, hope for the best. One C in this as well? I think so, yeah. Full steam ahead, no fear. Let's go. Again, setting up extra defense here to better tank the air slashes. XP and then what two X, X specials? Yeah, I haven't been keeping track of uh, Cress's special attack here, so probably gonna set up two and then set up the third that Pika needs, uh, our Pika version needs on the Valplume. Okay, one more X special attack here. There we go. Okay, we're fine. Made it through. Once you're through set up, this fight is basically free because now we can sweep again. Uh, might want to set up a third X special on this Wild Plume. But this Wild Plume always goes for Solar Beam, basically. Uh, yeah, there we go. So you always get that one free turn of setup. Yeah, even though it's a two turn move, it's uh, like 200 base power in Let's Go. So it always likes to do it. There are some very, very niche cases where it goes for different moves. Uh, I've only heard it said, I've never seen it happen. But it's definitely it's, it's so rare that it's 
just consistent basically to set up the third X special attack if you need it. But yeah, Crisis made it through. Got it over the line. Not gonna beat Sandy Sam like this, but uh, at least we'll get that second place finish for that one point minimum. Wait. Uh, uh, I was gonna say, is Sheep on for a PB here? I think they might be just short, but still a really good time. Um, yeah, that's not gonna be a PB. I think it's 3 310 for Sheep. 310.54. Yeah, that's not gonna be. He'd have to be through the fight right now to beat that. I forget how much faff there is at the end. It's basically a minute after whatever is done. Uh, until the fate to black that sig uh, Signal has the end of the run. So Kras is going to end this with a 309. 5-309. Uh, still a very good run for a race, for sure, but super unlucky to get crit on that lance fight the first time around. GG the crisis. Let's see that final time here. This is the slight, slight advantage of taking just the one, uh, just the one Pokemon into the into the champion fight is that the Hall of Fame cuts in slightly ever so slightly quicker. Yeah, yeah, that's slightly faster because you don't have to go through everything in your party, like uh, Saiyan and Sheep will will or have already done. But yeah, 309.47, absolutely respectable time for this first round of the tournament. GG to Crisis. Sheep's just gonna yeah. finish up. Uh, the the current, median, hmm? current median time is 309.05, so a little bit behind that, but this is only the, the second race of the of this round, so there's so like that could well end up being a, a time that gets you uh, above that cutoff. Yeah, that's still a lot of round one to go. This is the second race uh, out of ten that's going to happen. It was supposed to be eleven, but we had uh, one runner sadly drop out of the tournament. So there's still a lot of times that are going to be coming in. Also, yes, GG. Huge GG to Sheep as well for finishing this run. 3.11, just a minute slower than his PB. So that's that's still an amazing run, honestly. Yeah, that, especially in a race setting where there's, where there's added pressure. And, you know, there's maybe a bit more to think about. But yeah, it's a very good run. Coming up on the final time for our final finisher here. 3.11.34. Only 40 seconds behind PB, that's really good. Alright, GG, what a race, especially toward the end here between those two runners. That definitely was, was something. Lance tried his tried his level best to get to get sheep away back into it, but uh, crisis it took a, took some took some fortitude I think to go to go back in with one controller after after you get crit there, but uh, yeah trusted it and uh, and it paid through. Yeah, honestly, she probably still would have had to go full risky strats. Uh, at the end there to have a chance to catch up to Crisis even with that crit. All right. Looks like none of the runners will join us here right now but that is all right in that case we're just I think, gonna I think they're joining in a minute i think they they gotta take their 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 break before they're getting in <laughs> it's like all righty 
yeah, obviously runners are not mandated or forced to come in for it for an interview uh-huh. afterwards, especially after you've just been racing for for three hours. And those races uh, can be, I mean, every like the game can throw all sorts at you. So uh, yeah, it's appreciated when runners come in, but not necessarily expected of them. Speaking of which, though, looks like we're joined by Crisis right now. Crisis, how are you feeling? I hate that Oddish. <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten about the Oddish. Yeah. I, I didn't forget about that Oddish. When, when the first catch kind of goes uh, awry like that, how does that change your, your frame of mind for the rest of the run? I'm just become more disappointed. I'm like, well, that's fine. We'll just not get any good run. It's not the first time that I had a breakout three times in the beginning. In fact, last race I did, uh, I had a breakout three times in a row. So I was like, oh, great. This is how it's going to go again. <laughs> and then Lance. Actually, this is the first time I actually died to Lance by a crit. So, you know, I get that experience out of the way. That's the first time? Wow. Okay. Yeah. In fairness, I haven't ran that long, but this, yeah, this is the first time Lance decided to crit me. And the reason why I went back to One Piece, because if it happens once, surely it doesn't happen again. <laughs> Almost immediately afterwards. That's, that's sound tragic. Yeah, that's true. We yeah, yeah, are I joke, I see this well. Mistakes and a few menuing mistakes. Yeah, this run is fine. I don't like it, though. I mean, you still finished second, so that's uh, yeah. definitely an achievement. Uh, and yeah, like Moka said, we're also joined by Sheep. Sheep, Hello. how there. are you doing? Uh, that was rough. Like that mid game, that went uh, that went bad. I uh, um, at the moment of that uh, that spinner pass in tower, I've like practiced that spinner pass. Uh, I've done it in the last 15 runs or something. It's never been an issue. Someone rang the bell at that moment. Like, Crisis, oh. were you sabotaging me or whatever? Just, like, got me out of my rhythm, hit up a bit. And and then that Pidgeotto, that just, like, wouldn't get in. That was just, like, two rough bits. Uh, I speed uh the Arbok on uh, Jesse and James 2. And... Lost that speed tie and also didn't hit the, I think, 14 and 16 range. It was like that that bit of the mid game just was awful, but um, the end game was really good, or at least like really solid. I saved like over two and a half minutes on, for, over my PB in that, so at least that gives uh, some room for improvement. I mean, you still came mighty close to, to getting a PB even with even with the mid game kind of not going to plan. So that's in a race setting as well is, is, you know, a very good run. Yeah. With like two optionals. Um, and, uh, yeah, just the catches didn't, it were okay, I guess, but like a late full picks in Jigglypuff, I was like, okay, I'm just going for these. It was all a bit, well, it's just, I guess just a let's go rim a bit strange sometimes. Yeah, that that's about. Let's go. Uh, oh, crisis! You went for the you went for the very late Jigglypuff as well. All right. So my thought about that was, I didn't need the Lapras candy at all. Like I yeah. had, I didn't need to wrap. I I got the Care Bear candy for Growlithe from the, that Growlithe route, which normally means that if you get that, you can skip the Mansion candy because normally you'd use one rare candy on Rapidash and what on Ponyta to get Rapidash and. The rest on Starmie, but uh, I, but because my Ponyta evolved naturally, instead of having to wear candy, it, I thought, ah, I don't need the Lapras candy. So if I find anything I don't have, probably just worth catching it. At least that's what I thought. Apparently it's faster. Apparently, so I don't know. I just thought it would be, I thought it would be slightly faster that I don't have to menu to the seventh floor and grab two things I don't need. But that was my at least my logic behind the Jigglypuff. I also just didn't have a pink thing. Like that was the first oh, pink thing that spawned. That's a good point. Yeah, I can't have a pink thing. Like, no, like my track has no Clefairy. It has no Chansey. It has no Jigglypuff. Yeah, your your moon was also pretty rough, right? 
just in general. Yep. It was a shame because I think both Fist Pikachu and the Stami were pretty good. In fact, uh, that special X special on Vileplume, technically I didn't need to go for it if I wanted to risk a 14-16 uh, on Jolteon. Hmm. But I said, nah, I'm just going to X special just finish the run. Yeah, probably the safest bet at that point. The rest of the mid-game went honestly fine. Like, plus special Pikachu does help a lot in that. And, yeah, I mean, Cubone was kind of, like, a bit scary not to find, and if Ghastly didn't show up, I probably had to go for Tentacool, which wasn't, is not ideal, but you do have to, you do what you have to do. And also, it was an Eevee. I was actually tempted to catch that Eevee in over the Raticade, but I didn't have Silver Razes yet, so I said no. Yeah, Eevee without Silver is such a such an annoying catch. Yeah, that's why I said no. Yeah. <laughs> Probably a good choice is what I was trying to say. And I mean, the catch oh, yeah, was that one in. moment where on Archer 2 I survived on 1 HP. That was clutch. Yes. That was absolutely calculated and I didn't just risk it. <laughs> Hey, sometimes you gotta be absolutely calculated and not just risking it. But it's all you look like you're risking it. Oh no, that was just absolutely 100% a risk. I did not calculate. <laughs> I think that's something you should know about me. Is like something you should know. If you ever see me on a race, I'm always going for one P. Okay. On, one, on E4, like that's something you can definitely expect. I'm. I've deleted the two P notes off of my notes. That's good to know for our yeah. future races. All right, then. Do we have any more closing thoughts here from our runners? I, I'm looking at my, uh, my recording back, and I lost. I think three and a half minutes total with the spinner and the Pidgeotto. So that is quite significant. Yeah, I can I, I, I see that like there's like a a three oh eight or a three oh seven hiding in there somewhere. So oh, for sure. ho hopefully next race. That's just free time save on your next attempt. Exactly. Well, we're looking forward to both of your next races in the next round uh, but for now let's look at the schedule for the upcoming races because we have a pretty stacked weekend when it comes to races uh, later today we have New Amber versus Kerbus versus Leggy Starscream probably one of if not the most anticipated race of round one that's going to happen at 7pm eastern so just about two hours from now I believe yep, uh, won't want to miss that then tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, we have Takalarat versus uh, Diego Lazo R4 with a special appearance by Jay Tattles. Uh, Jay Tattles, of course, was uh, originally drawn into a two-player match, but then his opponent sadly dropped out of the tournament, so is now going to race alongside Tucker and Diego to get a time on the board. I, I uh, heard they have a cracking commentary team. Yes, they have it. Yeah. They have an amazing commentary team. <laughs> it might be Shiba Me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, same day, just a little bit later at 6 p.m., it's going to be Randall Eats Cheese versus Fokotek Sadi versus Burner. Fun race. Also, all of these races are happening on this channel. So follow the channel if you want to find your way back here for these amazing races coming up in the tournaments. Yeah, uh, we've got. Uh, three more races scheduled for the next couple of days as well, because uh, Ergo versus Headbob versus Razor is tomorrow at 11 p.m. Eastern, so uh, quote unquote degen hours, I think I heard it called. Uh, and we've got Aspect Yuzari and Albi uh, on Saturday, as well as Etiquette, King Trubs, and Alwo. So there is so much let's go to come. Over the next couple of days, uh, here on here on PSR TV, and uh, if I'm not here in the booth, I'll probably be watching it with everyone else in chat. I most certainly will try.
All right. With that, thank you all for watching. And we hope to see you for the upcoming matches.